the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Opening night brings us to 901, and you know what you're going to find in Memphis. The folks are out early tailgating at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. The food, the music always on point as the hometown Tigers open the year, welcoming in the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats out of the swag. With former Memphis running back Doc Holliday, I'm Nate Gatter. So glad to have you with us tonight. Bethune-Cookman, a ton of turnover, only 25 returners. For Memphis, meanwhile, Doc, it's time to take a jump in year four under Ryan Silverfield. It is. Ryan Silverfield, first three seasons, has been pretty good, 7-6 last year. Did get a bowl win, but going into year four, Memphis Tigers fans want more, and Ryan Silverfield wants more. Let's get a look at the uh, quarterback situation for Bethune-Cookman. We weren't exactly sure what we were going to see coming into tonight. We thought it would be one of those two, the transfers, Bethea and Sprague. Instead, first-year head coach Raymond Woody Jr. throwing us a curveball, going with the returner, Walter Simmons III. But I like Walter Simmons because he's been there. Coach Woody knows what he's getting. He's a returning player, a quarterback who knows the players, who knows the system. So he's a running quarterback, but I'm not surprised that Woody is going with the return. Meanwhile, Memphis has the benefit of an awful lot more stability in Seth Hennigan, already in his third year as a starter, even though he's only 20 years old. What can Tigers fans expect to see from him this year? Straight buckets. I know this football, but he gives you straight buckets. 3,500 yards last year. He's just extremely smart, and Seth seems to always make the right decision. He always finds the receiver that needs to get the ball, the receiver that's open. He does that. 14 different receivers getting the ball last year, and I'm, of course, he's probably going to do more of the same this year. This is a Bethune-Cookman program with a proud tradition going back to the days in the MEAC. The Wildcats have transitioned to the SWAC, and now it's going to be the job of Raymond Woody Jr. to usher back that era of success. He said he is very grateful to be back at his alma mater. Meanwhile, Ryan Silverfield in his fourth season now, Doc, we talked about it. It's uh, time for a jump, and certainly Memphis fans hoping this is going to be the year to get back to 9, 10 wins or more. Indeed, 21 and 16 in this first three seasons. Of course, seasons, of course, Coach Silverfield expecting a lot more success this year, and he feels like he has a squad to get them over the hump. I think those Memphis boys are ready to go. All 11 are out there on uh, kick coverage before Bethune has even put anybody out there. That's what you call being anxious. Look, we've been in preseason training camp. Training camp is over, so they're on the field telling Bethune Cookman, get here. Bethune Cookman is like, we're coming. Don't worry about it. We're coming, going right after here short. Bethune Cookman will be in gold. Memphis, of course, in blue at home. Ready to kick things off. The first ever meeting between these two programs. Cade Hector will put it in the air for Bethune Cookman. Richard Sophomore from Sydney, Australia, in his first season with the Wildcats, but all but 25 players on this roster are in their first seasons. Toski Dove, the transfer from Missouri, is deepest for Memphis. Bethune Cookman won the toss, but deferred to the second half. Hector goes short, taken inside the 30 by the backup Memphis tight end, Anthony Lanfear, and he takes it up close to the 40 yard line. Lanfear is going to be in a bigger role this year, along with uh, the rest of that tight end room that lost Caden Priestcorn. The top five pass catchers for this Memphis offense all departed. But uh, as we talked about at the outset, Doc, Seth Hennigan is uh, comfortable finding a lot of different targets. Indeed, and Lanfear is one of those receivers. He's not the best receiver like Caden Priestcorn was at that tight end position, but he is a blocker. He does play hard, and Coach Silverfield and Tim Cramsey, the offensive him. coordinator, they have the spot a lot of, the of catch. Confidence. First down. Referee Nate Black informing us that uh, Lanfear made a fair catch signal. So Memphis will take over at the spot of the catch back at the 27. Seth Hennigan, as mentioned, out his third year this, as a starter and likely today to reach 7,000 career yards already. Man, just unreal. It's just the productivity and the things that he's done in two short years is unbelievable. Of course, new coaching staff for Bethune-Cookman. Robert Wimberly is calling the defense against second-year OC Tim Cramsey for Memphis. Five wide for Hennigan. Goes outside where it's caught by Demir Blankepsy, one of a bevy of transfers who will see a lot of touches on the outside. Blankepsy, the redshirt junior from Toledo, where he caught 41 passes a year ago. Well, you see the Tigers come out with an empty backfield. Tim Cram, the offensive coordinator, says he wants to kiss, give his playmakers, give them an opportunity in the space to make some plays. But right there, Bethune Cookman said, no, no. Second and ten. Off play action, he goes outside for Drake. Look at the room for Kobe Drake down the sideline, and he's banged out of bounds close to midfield by Jabari Jowden. 
And what can you say about that? That's exactly what this Memphis Tigers offense wants to do. They didn't have a lot of big play and big play makers last year. And right now, coming out here, you just see it's just a quick little flat little bubble screen. And he takes it and gets up the field, gets a couple of great blocks. And that's the way you want to finish the run. First and 10, they put it at midfield, a gain of 22 for Drake. And again, third throw in as many plays, and he finds his man, Rock Taylor, who has another first down inside the 40, down to the Bethune 37. And I love to see that about Rock Taylor. He just runs the 10-yard stop route. Rock is the leading returning receiver coming back because the Tigers lost their top five receivers, but Rock only 20 catches last year. It's good to see him get going early. Offensive coordinator Tim Cramsey said they're seeing a different Rock Taylor, and he hopes Tigers fans are going to see some of that work pay off this year. 13 yards after the 22-yarder to Drake. Hennigan over the middle. Blankemsey in space. Blankemsey inside the 20, and he's brought down to the 15. That's just absolutely beautiful. You see Seth Hennigan stands back there, stands tall, and if you see, look at the pocket. He has all the time in the world, and when you get open space like that with no one around you, short little shallow crossing route, picking up some big yards, this Memphis offense is rolling. Blankemsey's second catch already in the Memphis Blue. Haven't seen a run yet. Blake Watson is the tailback in the pistol behind Hennigan. Watson gets the carry off the right side, has a crease, and pulls his way inside the five. Welcome to Memphis, Blake Watson. He gets a dozen, and he's inside the five. And that's where you start your career when you go to a new school, a new team. His first carry picks up some great yardage. Quickly off the low snap, Watson hit in the hole. Watson turning to the goal line, and he's in. Two carries and a Memphis touchdown for Blake Watson. How about that for an opening Tigers drive? And what can you see? say? Blake Watson getting the ball two times in a row. First carry, great carry. Second carry, great carry. Touchdown, but it was really about the passing and just the offensive execution for that from that entire Memphis Tigers offense. And when you see right there, you, you know at the line of scrimmage it's going to be a little tougher, especially at the goal line it's going to be a little tougher. But Blake Watson, like I came from Old Dominion, I did that there. I'm going to do that here too. Maybe he only gets a quarter of a touchdown because he carried three Wildcats on his back into the end zone. I think they get part of that, too. <laughs> Seth Morgan, the transfer kicker from Sam Houston, is on for the extra point. He's made 68 of these in a row. Make it 69 straight. Six plays, 73 yards. And Memphis puts seven points on the board. Just two and a half minutes into this one on opening night. Blake Watson, the transfer from Old Dominion, says hello to the 901. The American on ESPN is presented by It's Game On at St. Pete Clearwater. Proud supporter of the American and home to America's best beaches. Find all the action you're looking for and visit stpeteclearwater.com. Two and a half minutes off the clock, and the Memphis Tigers are sporting a 7-0 lead already on opening night at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Blake Watson capped off his first drive in the blue and white with a two-yard plunge to put the hometown Tigers on top. Make Adder Doc Holliday with you this evening. Tristan Vandenberg to put it in the air for Memphis. And a fair catch taken at the goal line. So Bethune-Cookman will have it at the 25-yard line. And we'll get a chance to see this Wildcats offense for the first time that lost more than 80% of its catches from last year, more than 80% of its rushes from last year. Does bring back Walter Simmons, the third at quarterback, but he didn't take any snaps last season. This is essentially a new 11 for a new head coach in Raymond Woody Jr. and a new offensive coordinator in Joe Gerbino. And he should be excited because you're getting an opportunity here on the road. Now, you, you really don't have too much pressure on you if you walk Simmons because Memphis Tigers just went down the field in six plays, 73 yards, and a touchdown. So now you come out here to see what you can do, see how you can make your offense answer what Memphis Tigers offense has did to his defense. Simmons keeps it on the first play and gets across the 30 where he's spun down by Simeon Blair after a gain of six. Transfer safety from Arkansas where he was captain of the Razorbacks, now captain of the Tigers. The coaches have raved about him. Oh, yeah, he's a captain. He just got here earlier this year and was voted captain, so that says a lot about his leadership skills. Quickly to the outside, Dakari Allen Johnson has his first touch, and he's close to first down yardage. They'll mark him out at the 34. It'll set up third down and one. I just you, you just love this reaction speed. You see them throw it out, 
in the bubble. But just check out how my guy just steps up and just lays a hat on him. That is the kind of reaction you want when you're playing on defense. A couple of young starting corners for Memphis as well. Diego Brumfield and D.J. Bell, redshirt sophomore transfer and a redshirt freshman respectively. Jaden Bivens shifts to the left of Walter Simmons. Bivens gets the carry, gets the yard, and gets a bit more. He's out across the 40. Jeffrey Kantnarku got there for Memphis after a pickup of eight at a Bethune-Cookman first down. And you got to love that with Bethune. You see the offensive line, they're getting some push on their Memphis Tigers defensive line, making a hole, and you love to see when the running back can find the hole and get through the hole and pick up some good yardage. Bivens, a sophomore, didn't see the field last year, but gets the first carry for any Wildcats running back atop the depth chart this season. Simmons keeps it again. Bounces all the way to the outside. Bell's in pursuit, and they finally run him out of bounds close to midfield. Simmons on another successful keeper picks up seven. And let's get a look, Doc, at our players to watch, brought to you by Regents Bank. And that's our guy, Jimmy Robinson the third, the running back there. He's 5'7", 195 pounds. Redsurge sophomore. Didn't get too many carries. Khalil Overton, he's the tight end that they want to count on to help with their quarterback. And Jalen Allen, what can you say about him? Preseason first team all AAC. And Simeon Blair, the transfer for Arkansas, we'll be talking about his leadership skills. And he knows how to go to the rock. Simmons has carried it twice and been productive. On a quick pitch pass, this is Davino Ellington. And he's stood up for no gain. Sets up another Bethune third down, this time with three yards to go. But I love to see what Bethune is trying to do. They're coming right with the rocket sweep, the jet sweep, trying to get around that Memphis Tigers defense. But you got to like what the defensive ends and the end men on the Memphis Tigers defense are doing. They're doing their job. That's contained. You don't want anybody to get around you so they can get down the field. So good play from that Tigers defense. Jimmy Robinson the third highlighted in those Regents Bank players to watch in there in the backfield for the Wildcats. He gets his first carry of the year, but he stops short. It's going to be fourth and one from just inside Memphis territory. Doc, you'd have to think this is the spot the Wildcats got to go for it. Show they're committed, nothing to lose. Look, man, you're on the road. No one expects you to win. You're right there at the 50. Why not go for it? Fourth down and a yard. Robinson the tailback. Simmons adjusts. Extra offensive lineman in there for Bethune-Cookman. Over to the H-back. Robinson gets it. Robinson stacked up. He's not going to get there. The Memphis defense stands, and the Tigers take over at midfield. You know what that is, Nate? That's like going into a car dealership, and you know and your credit score is 490. You know you're going to get denied trying to get that car. That's exactly what the Memphis Tigers defense just did. Um, you got to give it to Bethune Cookman going forward there. Raymond Woody making a tough decision early on, but that Memphis Tigers front line, that is what you call denial, denial, rejection, smack back. Memphis Tigers with some momentum on their defense right now. So Memphis will take back over at midfield after a 73 yard drive that took just two and a half minutes on the opening possession of the year. Not much not to like about that first drive, Doc. No, they did everything they wanted to do. They threw the ball well, they ran the ball well, and you got a touchdown. So you really won any negatives that you can see from that first drive. And again to throw has Watson in the flat. Watson across the 45 and drags a tackler down to the 43. Stefan Sparrow, the sophomore from Orlando, makes the play after a gain of seven. And when you look at that play, that play is pretty much there the entire time. And you got Rock Taylor, that's the receiver we're coming back. They're going to be counting on him. And Blake Watson, the quarterback, we've already seen him go to the plate. The running back, we've already seen him go to the plate to point some more. Omari Hill Robinson, preseason first team all swack, and Eddie Wall the third. Are some players that Bethune Cookman going to need them to step up big this game. Tonight's Regents Bank players to watch. Out of the swing passes, a first time Bethune Cookman has read it well. No chance for Memphis. And the Tigers go backwards a couple of yards on another completion for Hennigan, but this time nothing there for Sutton Smith on his first touch. And you see that Bethune-Cookman defense. They've seen that a couple of times. They know Hennigan is trying to go to the flat and get his receivers in some space. The defense, extremely good reaction time, making that a very minimal possession play for the Tigers. So that's something good, something good uh, Bethune-Cookman can be happy about. Third and five at the 45. Hennigan has not missed yet. Under some pressure, low over the middle. It's up in the air and intercepted. 
The officials are going to let it go. Sparrow's going the other way. And Bethune Cookman has run it all the way back. 58 yards on the pick six. Shelton Quarles Jr. puts the Wildcats on the board. And you got to love that if you're Shelton Quarles. You got to love that if you're Bethune Cookman. That gets some nice little pressure on Seth Hennigan. He's going back and really not getting to the throw. The pressure gets it. It goes low and it gets popped into the air. And what can you say, man? It's always better to be lucky than to be good. And right there, Shelton Quarles is better lucky. And he was good. The ball taps right up to him. He picks it up. And he goes the other way. And in order to win games like this on the road, you got to come up with plays like that. And that's what exactly what Bethune has gotten. And you see how happy, happy. We're on the field of a touchdown. Is under further review. You hear there from our referee Nate Black that they're going to take another look at this. Memphis thinks it hit the ground. The uh, crowd here at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium just saw it on the big board. I wasn't so sure on that first look, Doc. It's tough to tell if that hits the ground or if it goes off Kobe Drake's left foot. Yeah, it's tough, man. You really don't know if, if you know it would love. We really can't see too much out here. Even though we got great camera work, you don't know whether it hit the ground or whether he got his hand on it. But you know what Bethune Cookman is hoping. They said no, man. It, it, it ran off his hand. But Memphis is like, no, it hit the ground. So, of course, you're going to have Memphis Tigers fans cheering one way or the other. But either way, Bethune Cookman still coming up with the play. Even if it's called back, they're still, you know, feeling a little bit more confident of what they got going on right now. What the introduction for Shelton Quarles Jr. Redshirt Jr. transfer from Sanford in his After season. further review, the ball hit the ground. This is an incomplete pass. Fourth down. So a break for Memphis. Seth Hennigan's perfect record still intact. Would have been hard uh, luck for Seth Hennigan the first time he barely misses on a throw all season if it goes 58 yards the other way. But uh, unfortunate for the Wildcats who thought they had caught a big break. Yeah, man, if, if, if you're if you're Bethune, of course you're disappointed right now. But if you're Seth, you know what you can and cannot do. You got away with one. I don't know how many times you can get away with those during this game. But right now he gets the reprieve. And I, watching Seth Hennigan over the course of these first two seasons, I don't think he's going to be making uh, a mistake like that again. And Memphis is going to go for it on fourth and five from the Bethune 45 yard line. You like this call? Yeah, man. You know, if you're Memphis, you're being aggressive, but I'm Bethune Cookman. I'm like, you just going to disrespect us like that because that's how they feel like they're doing. But Memphis, he has confidence. Silverfield has confidence in what his offense can get done. And again, has completed six of seven. Rolls to the outside, and he hits Rock Taylor inside the 30. No, they call it incomplete. He must have bobbled it on the sideline. Taylor came up with it, but the officials on the near sideline call it incomplete. Now, the thing about this, you have Seth Hennigan rolling against his body. It's a great throw, but Rock Taylor just stepped on the outside. Now, it's, with me, it's fourth and five. I would like a more simple play. You don't want to, you don't want to have your quarterback going against and throwing against his body, but that's what happened. Ryan Silverfield wants the officials to take another look at this. We're going to take a break. As it stands, Bethune takes over. Down 7-0 in the first. During the break, they did take a look at this to see if Rock Taylor might have gotten his foot in bounds. Didn't look like it to us. Let's hear from referee Nate Black on the results of the review. After further review, the receiver had firm control of the ball with his right toe down in bounds. This is a completed catch. First down, Memphis. So I guess the naked eye was right, Doc, and the angle we saw initially was off. Well, I just turned 50, so my vision, you know, I just don't know. But, you know, you, you got the white cleats on and you got the white line. But that's just a beautiful throw and a beautiful catch, even though the throw was kind of difficult. Seth made it. Rock Taylor made a great catch. First down, move the chains. Four more downs. First and 10 for Memphis at the 28. Off play action, Hennigan goes to the outside, right back to Taylor, makes Hill Robinson miss, and stumbles for a first down on a pickup of a dozen into the red zone. That's just easy money right there. You got Rock Taylor, you got Hill Robinson, one of the best cornerbacks in the SWAT. One on one in space, and Rock just catch the rock, made a miss, picks up some very good yardage. Another first down for Hennigan, out to Watson. Watson has a crease. Watson with a flag down is into the end zone. As it stands, it's his second Memphis touchdown in as many drives, but the marker is against the Tigers. This is going to be coming back. That's going to be holding on the mirror. I'm looking right at him. Holding. Offense, number zero. Ten-yard penalty. First down. And, Nate, I was just about to say, Demir Blackcomsey with a great block. 
he, he, but he held on just a little too long. And what happens, you're blocking, you have a great block, but once the receiver running gets past you, you have the defender wants to go, and you have a tendency to grab the jersey, and that's what happened. So instead of a Blake Watson touchdown, it's first down and extra long for Memphis, back it up to the 24 yard line. So the Tigers will have 18 yards to go. From the pistol, Watson is the deep bat. Hennigan goes to the slot for Blankham C. He's turned around deep behind the line of scrimmage, gets a block from his quarterback, and still stumbles down in the backfield where he's ultimately brought down by Rayon Blake, the senior from Bahokee, Florida, after a loss of four. Well, Jameer looked a little, he looked a little lost. You, you caught the ball and you turned, you turned your back. I know he's trying to make some plays, but sometimes you can be a little bit too creative. But I love the opposite field, the change of direction right there. But that Bethune Cookman, that's what you call ball pursuit defense running him down. Lincolnsey's third catch already. He and Rock Taylor have three grabs apiece. Haven't called Toski Dove's name yet, the transfer from Missouri. Hennigan outside Drake was wide open and Hennigan just overshot him. Yeah he had him. he had him you don't really see Seth missing too many passes like that and he kind of missed that uh, gloriously he threw the ball about two feet above Blake's head and he and he's at he, Drake is axing just bring it down a little bit because I probably would have had a touch. And again on third down and a mile. Must see the motion man come back to the near side and completes the screen, but Bethune was all over it. No gain on that play, and it's going to be a long Memphis field goal coming up. Another connection to Watson, but how about the Wildcats defense sniffing this out? And I love that you see Bethune coming out in the cover three. They knew the Tigers probably wanted to go deep, but he throw to Blake right there, and he gets pillaged. Absolutely pillaged. I love the aggressiveness and the physicality that Bethune Cookman, their front seven, is playing with right now. That was Rayon Blake again. He made two big tackles on that Memphis possession. 45 yard field goal for Seth Morgan, who made 15 of 21 last year at Sam Houston with a long of 52. His first Memphis kick is on the way, and it is right down the middle. How about that for a Tigers debut? The young man from Houston, Seth Morgan, makes it a two score Memphis lead. Live sports, thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library, exclusive access, top leagues and tournaments, and the biggest names in the game, ESPN Plus. Live sports. Thousands of live events. ESPN Plus Originals. The exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive access. Top leagues and tournaments. And the biggest names in the game. ESPN Plus. Live sports. Thousands of live events. ESPN Plus Originals. The exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive access. Top leagues and tournaments. And the biggest names in the game. ESPN Plus. Live sports. 
thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library, exclusive access, top leagues and tournaments, and the biggest names in the game, ESPN Plus, live sports, thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library, exclusive access, top leagues and tournaments, and the biggest names in the game, ESPN Plus, live sports, thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library, exclusive access, top leagues and tournaments, and the biggest names in the game, ESPN Plus, live sports, thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library, exclusive access, top leagues and tournaments, and the biggest names in the game, ESPN Plus, live sports, thousands of live events, ESPN Plus Originals, the exclusive home of the complete 30 for 30 library. Exclusive access. Top leagues and tournaments. And the biggest names in the game. ESPN Plus. Live sports. Thousands of live events. ESPN Plus originals. This will take over at the plus 44. Great field position. Not the cut, not the punt you want if you're McDonald Cookman, if you're Raymond Woody Jr., but you know, you get no specialists in there. A lot of them first time action, a little nervous here. But you want your punter to put the ball at least on the other side of the 50. Now Memphis Tigers come out with that offense, great field position, hopefully get some things going. And of course, you can't expect Seth Hennigan to constantly be you know, missing. He's missed a couple of times. Uh, you, you can't account on that with Seth Hennigan. A touchdown and a field goal for Memphis on its first two drives. And this one starts from the Bethune-Cookman 44-yard line. Watson next to Hennigan. It's Watson up the middle, and he's stacked up. Bethune's done a good job up front. Just a gain of a yard for Blake Watson. It'll be second down and nine. We talked about Seth Hennigan a lot already. Make that something Smith who was on the carry. How about in his first game of his junior season, Seth Hennigan is already just 16 yards from becoming the fifth Memphis quarterback ever to hit 7,000 in his career. Record breaker. Legendary. He's done some, good, some great things and possibly still has another two full seasons to go. Smith in motion. Hennigan looks his way. Wanted to go down the field, and he finds Rock Taylor. There's 7,000 yards and more. Rock Taylor out of bounds inside the 20, and Seth Hennigan is just the fifth Memphis Tiger ever to throw for 7,000 career yards. It's game one of his junior season. And that came beautifully. You see Rock Taylor constantly running these crossing routes. There's so much space in the back end, the second level of that Bethune Cookman defense, and Seth has been able to find receivers several times. Memphis back into the red zone where Bethune Cookman struggled last year defensively. This was the seventh worst defense in FCS. Almost 40 points a game. And again, has his pass deflected and intercepted. Look at Bethune Cookman going the other way again. Hennigan runs him down with Watson. He's still going. All the way to the goal line and all the way back to pick six. 70 yards for Amari Jones. This pick six will stand, and Bethune-Cookman is on the board. 
and you have to love that play. To be a defensive lineman, that is what you want to do. He plays that jack position, which means he has the ability to play defensive end, a linebacker, but he rushes, gets to Seth Hennigan, blocks it. Not only do you block it in the air, you're able to have the wherewithal. And just look at this. It's just a great play. You beat your man. You bat the ball, then you turn around, you do a 360, and you catch it, and Big Dog outruns everyone. Then Seth tries to catch him, and he said, no, nah, I'm going to stop. You get up off of me, you get your hands off of me, and Big Dog takes it for a touchdown. Absolutely incredible play. And what, the third Cookman just had to burn its first time out because of a substitution issue on the extra point. But you can understand why the Wildcats special teams unit might have been caught a little bit off guard. That first pick six was called back on review, an incomplete pass. Amari Jones said, how about number two? Just the 17th career interception for Seth Hennigan, his first of the season. And he showed some awareness there, Amari Jones, in the open field. He had to cut back between Hennigan and Watson, broke a tackle. I, I would be surprised if he had a little running back in his history. That's why he's playing that jack, like that, that little hybrid type of position. And you look at him, because he, he beats the offensive line, bats it, then you got to turn around and catch it. Then when you catch it, you get gone. But also, you got to know you got you got Blake trying to run him down. You got Seth running him down. Neither one of them can catch him. And now you got a 10-7 ball game and Bethune Cookman over there with Dolph Smiles. Hector adds the extra point, his first Wildcats point. How about that from Amari Jones? Coast to coast. And no matter what happens for Bethune, the last three quarters of this game, that's going to be a highlight to take back to Daytona Beach. It is, Nate. And I can't tell you how impressive that is, man. Because, one, you got to beat the offensive tackle, which is done. Then you want to try to get to the quarterback. He saw he couldn't get to the quarterback, so he thinks quickly, I'm going to deflect the pass or either knock it down. And I'm pretty sure he was thinking he was going to knock it down. But he gets his hand on it, he go, gets in the air, and this is the highlight of all highlights for his career in Amari. 6'2", 244 from Ruskin. My man from Ruskin rushed right down the field and got six points for his team. And, and Bethune has to be feeling extremely confident right now because despite not being able to do too much on offense, what's the score? Uh, my eyes are 10-7. It's just 10-7. So they're right there, man, with their striking distance. Jones, the pride of Lennard High School, had 31 tackles and a sack last year, so he was a contributor for the Wildcats. No interceptions on his resume. That's a new category for Mr. Jones. Hector on to kick it away. He went short. And it was taken by the up man, Anthony Landfear, close to the 30 on the opening kickoff. Same spot. Another fair catch, this time at the 30-yard line. And that's where Memphis will take over. But Duke Cookman evidently wants no part of the Tigers' returners. Matthew Seth Hennigan at Memphis Tigers offense. How do you respond? Uh, how do you respond? How do you come back from something like that? Because that's twice now. You have one touchdown, pick six call back. You give up another one. So now Ryan Silverfield wants to see how this third-year starting quarterback, how is he going to lead his offense back to answer a big play that Bethune Cookman just put on. Nearly 13 minutes into the season, Memphis has 131 total yards. Bethune Cookman has just 25. But after the second pick six for the Wildcats stood up, it's just a three-point game. Hennigan gives to Sutton Smith, breaks a tackle, shimmies up the middle, still going across the 40, where he's picked up into the air by Iverson Clement, the grad transfer from Temple, but not before a gain of 12 and a first down for Memphis. And I love that. That's just a very shifty run. Sutton Smith shows his explosiveness. He shows his quick feet. And as a running back, that's what you want to see that a running back has. He has the ability to find a hole and not only when you find it be able to get there but also give him a little bit of that tap tap and get some positive yardage and that's exactly exactly what such stuff is doing. Land fear in motion. Smith a gaping hole gashes into Bethune Cookman territory and they'll move the chains for him again another 10 yards for Sutton Smith make it 11 on the spot to the 47 and that's back to back plays for Memphis controlling the line of scrimmage but and you know what I like about Sutton Smith north and south north and south one cut gets up the field and he just did it again right there give him another couple of yards 
He's going to come off and Blake Watson returns the transfer from Old Dominion. This is now a deep running back room for offensive coordinator Tim Cramsey of the Tigers. It is. He talked to you know they talked about Blake Watson transferring in but now I see and everybody see why Silverfield and Tim Cramsey they're so high on Sutton Smith and Blake Watson. That's a nice little two headed monster they got. Second and seven. And again has time to Watson again the fourth catch already for Blake Watson who spun down to the 35 give him a gain at nine and a first down and that's something you like to see out of your running backs especially with Blake he was known to be a nice receiver when he was at Old Dominion so that's one of the aspects that he brings to this type of offense being able to catch the rock out of the back 37 catches last year as a monarch for Blake Watson a school record for an Old Dominion running back in a single season. Over 2,600 career yards from scrimmage between his two schools. Give him a couple of more. Give him a few more. Give him a lot more. Blake Watson, another 10 yards to close out the first quarter and another Memphis first down. Good. After a Seth Hennigan pick six, the Tigers decided they're going to keep this one on the ground. Why not? Good, strong running, man. Give it to the running back. Right? Give it to the running back. And that's exactly what this is starting to do. Blake Watson with a Tigers debut to remember already, but it's just a three-point Memphis lead after one. Memphis up three after one. What's the message from Ryan Silverfield in that huddle, you think, Doc? Well, he's telling his offense, look, we've dominated the throwing Cookman in every statistical category, passing the ball, running the ball, total plays and everything. But turnovers. The Tigers have one turnover, but Thorne Cookman doesn't have a turnover, and you see what transpires because of just a 10 7 lead. First and 10 at the 24. Memphis knocking on the door again. Hennigan quickly out for Rock Taylor across the 25, and he's out of bounds close to the 20. It's Memphis into the red zone again, but the Tigers this time need to capitalize. Rock Taylor has looked like he's turning into that number one receiver. And he's stepping up. They talk about how better, how much better he is this season, and so far he's showing it. Second and five of the 19. Hennigan steps up, has some room, and he's swallowed up around the 15-yard line. Short gain sets up third down and two. To your point, though, Rock Taylor already five catches, 71 yards. He only caught 20 balls all of last season. Just 20. So that that lets you know the work he put in during the offseason, knowing he had a prime opportunity to step up and get some passes thrown his way. So he worked even harder and it's paying off. And Seth believes in him. More than 75% of Memphis's receptions from last season departed, including the five leading receivers for Seth Hennigan, who hit 14 Tigers a year ago. Watson up the middle picks his way across the 15 and on that second effort he's close to a first down needed the 14 yard line and he is going to be right there. I'm going to tell you what I saw and what I like right there. Mari Jones coming up with another huge hit. Now he just had a pick six on the interception but right there Amari laying some helmet on the runner being extremely physical and that's something that you want. He is a weight. Fourth down and short. Memphis already converted one earlier through the air to Rock Taylor. Less than a yard to go for the Tigers who go to the eye for the first time tonight. Watson the deep back. Watson gets it. Watson has a seam. Watson has a touchdown. You know what? I always love that 21 personnel, man. You bring two running backs in there, one tight end. You line them up and say, look, we're coming at you. You stop us. And right there, Memphis Tigers come out in that 21 personnel. You get a fullback back there. You get a tailback back there. They lead him, make a hole, and Blake Watson finds the hole, and he gets through it. And you see number 20. You see Shelton Forrest Jr. getting absolutely destroyed. And you can't ask for a better execution if you're a running back, a better offensive line and fullback blocking. And it's just beautiful. Just, just beautiful. Blake Watson had five touchdowns all of last year at Old Dominion. He has two in his first quarter and change as a Memphis Tiger. The extra point is up and good. Blake Watson caps off a nine play 70 yard Memphis touchdown drive. Tigers back up 10.
Doc Blake Watson has been all smiles over on that Memphis bench, and why not? A couple of touchdowns already for the transfer from Old, Old Dominion. Well, the way he's been running that rock and the way his offensive linemen have been blocking for him, you'll be all smiles too, Blake. I mean, he's running hard. He's showing some shiftiness. And that's something that the coaches talked about with Blake Watson. They said he's not the quickest, he's not the fastest, but he makes the right decision. He has great vision. But right now, I don't care what kind of vision you had. It, it was hard to miss that hole that they just made for him. But he's running hard. He's playing extremely well. I think Doc Holliday could have run that one in, huh? At 50, I think younger, you know what I mean? I believe I don't know, you. man. I don't, know. I don't want to be back out there. Man. We don't need to find that. I'm done. No, Blake no, Watson's no, no, no. got you. Yeah. Should see how I move around now from the years of playing. It's, it, it, I get the creaking and cracking. Vandenberg puts it in the air again. Dees is going to bring this one back. Fair caught the first two. Now we get a look at the all swack kick returner, and he's brought down inside the 20. Maybe should have gone for another fair catch. And there have been uh, some skirmishes, let's say, after every kickoff. Ryan Silverfield was really hot after the last one. He thought Bethune was getting away with a couple of late shots. And the officials are going to have to get in there and break that up. That kick coverage can get a little feisty. Well, you know what I always say, kickoff return, kick team, that's the most violent play in all of football because you got these big guys, little guys, whatever. They're, they're running 40, 50 yards down the field full speed and smashing the two one another. So a lot of times you get mad. They, you, get, you, get, you get a little upset, man. A quarter and change into this one, and Memphis has dominated on total yardage. 69-yard pick six for Amari Jones, the only touchdown for the Wildcats. Walter Simmons, the third, goes to the outside, and it's blown up by Simeon Blair. No chance for Dakari Allen Johnson. He's thrown back for a loss of three. I don't know if Simeon, I know a lot of times they call players from the outside and they use the Wi-Fi. I don't know if Simeon has the Wi-Fi signal for Bethune Cookman, but he read that perfectly. The way he broke on it, I almost picked it off, but he was there. Extremely great reaction time in the way to close and the way to bring him down. Simmons has completed four of five passes now for a net of zero yards. Second and 13. They're in the backfield again. Simmons keeps it, and he's wrapped up. No gain. Third and 13 coming up. At this point, if you were offensive coordinator Joe Gerbino in his first game at Bethune, what would you be dialing up to try to get Simmons comfortable? Just keep running. I mean, you know he's not a great passer. Uh, just keep trying to run that option. You know, that quarterback, running back option. Just keep playing to his skills and his strength. And his strength is a running quarterback. So you really can't make him something that he's not. You just got to keep going with what he does best. Simmons looks left, comes back to the right. It's batted down and broke it up. Andres Fox, the redshirt senior transfer from Fresno State. Got his left hand out there to knock it down. And I love that. That's what you call doing your job. That's what you do. That's what you call not playing hero ball. His job is to contain. That's what he's supposed to be there to do. He tries to turn back around and throw it. That's why he's really not, you know, he's really not throwing too much because, you know, that Memphis Tigers defense, Matt Barnes, has them dialed in and ready to play. Drake is deep to return for Memphis. The young Australian. Max Tulin gets another chance to put it in the air for Bethune. Better punt takes Drake back to the 48. Drake has a little space. Drake reverses field. Kobe Drake inside the 40. Drake down the sideline, and Drake has it all the way down to the Bethune 20-yard line. Those are the kind of plays you want, but let me tell you who helped make that play happen. Brandon Thomas with a great block on the other side, and you got to give Drake credit. He saw it. Cross all the way across the field, and that's what you want a punt returner to have. When somebody is a punt returner, they got to be able to get the rock and be able to make people miss, but also be able to make decisions and cuts right now. And Drake did that great return for the Memphis Tigers, and here they have the ball on 17, 18 yard line, trying to put some more points on it. Here, here he is again, and I love the fact that he knows you're going back, you're going back across the field, so you got to put that ball in the right arm, the outside arm. He did that tiptoe. We call it tip through tulips down the sideline and of course he should get up and be happy about that because that's a big play and big plays is something the Memphis Tigers really didn't have a lot of last year. 33 yard return for Drake. Seth Hennigan back to work first and 10 of the Bethune 19. Ryan Silverfield's talked about it. Tim Cramsey's talked about it. They want more explosiveness in the Tigers this season. Outside for Sutton Smith. He's one of those explosive guys. Cuts it back up the middle inside the 15. Call it a gain of five 
on Smith's second catch in the early going. 15 completions already for Hennigan, though Memphis hasn't stretched the ball down the field a whole lot yet. No, they haven't, but the uh, Tigers are doing exactly what the OC said he wanted to do. He wants to get his playmakers the ball in space, and we've seen a lot of bubble screens, a lot of screens, and that's exactly what he's doing, a lot of crossing routes to get his players the ball, hopefully to make some plays. Smith was hit almost immediately. Falls forward for the gain of a yard. Another third down and four. Bethune has done a pretty good job getting penetration, and certainly the Wildcats have rallied to the football. Yeah, they've had moments. They've had moments. They have some things they can feel good about. It's just overall that that Memphis Tigers offense has, has been kind of dominating them. But that Bethune-Cookman defense, they have had some moments where they can feel good about some of the things that they've done. And one of those moments has been third downs. The Tigers are 0 for 3 on third downs so far, and that was an area Bethune really struggled in last season. Pitch pass to Drake up the middle inside the 10 and he has a first down at the nine before he's spun down by Eddie Wolves. Well you see the Tigers trying to they trying to do the little shuffle pass and Bethune Cookman is right there they read it all the way. And that's exactly what you want to do especially in the red zone so close to the goal line. Drake had the 33 yard punt return and the big third down catch to make it first and goal from the nine. Smith hit in the backfield, steps out of the tackle and gains a yard. Bethune Cookman at least trying to force Memphis to earn this through the air. Yeah, not just going to lay down. I mean, they're still playing tough out there. They, they, they see it's just 17-7, just to 7 and they, they've known they've won some battles. They have, they're not winning all the battles, but they've won some battles. And when you can win some one-on-one -on -one battles, that make you feel good going forward. Second and goal at the eight. Marcelo Bussey in motion. Hennigan under pressure. Hennigan throws it at the feet of Smith in the flat. Pressure put on him by Eddie Walls, who earned a single-digit number. Raymond Woody Jr. in his first year with Bethune made the Wildcats earn single-digit numbers. Walls did. He's in number nine this year. They are really excited about him. But Bethune, they read that perfectly. Everyone stays exactly where they were supposed to go. They know Seth was trying to go to the flat. You see Johnny Harris there, read that perfectly. He's right there. So anything you're trying to do, they're right there to shut it down. So that's one of those wins that Bethune Cookman has been able to accomplish here at times in this first half. 15 pounds of muscle Walls added this offseason. Memphis OC Tim Cramsey pointed to him right away as an issue. Third and goal. Hannigan over the middle, and it's behind Rock Taylor. Might have been tipped at the line. Seth Hennigan's going to want that one back. That's exactly what it was. You see big number 93 watching Seth the entire way. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get there and sack him. So he's looking Seth right in his eyes and watch what he was throwing. And he's able to get it up and put that to, uh, that Dikembe Mutombo on. From one Seth to another. Hennigan makes way for Morgan, the transfer kicker, filling the big shoes of Chris Howard, first team all league a year ago. And from 26 yards, he puts it through. So Seth Morgan has begun his Tigers career with a pair of field goals on as many tries. Memphis has made it a 13-point lead in the second quarter. Doc, considering how Memphis has dominated, Bethune Cookman still only 13 points down. Yeah, I mean they're right there at 20 to seven. But when you look at the stats, they they don't have anything going on offensively. I mean none at all. They got the seven points because they made a great defensive play. But I don't know if you're a coach, you know, Coach Woody, and what do you do with this offense because right now zero passing yards, 23 total yards. I know, I know, Walt Simmons is still in there, but there's a reason why those other two guys were listed as possible starters. I don't know if you want to make a quarterback change, but no. But you're still right there at 20 to seven. We were told potentially all three Bethune Cookman quarterbacks would get playing time. So far, only Walter Simmons the third, and Bethune Cookman has uh, not mounted much of anything since that first drive when the Wildcats did get to midfield before they were stopped and turned it over on downs. But Simmons is going to stay out there 
He's done some things with his legs, but now that the read option has stopped working, there's not a lot else for the Wildcats. Yeah, the only thing you do is keep doing it. That's what he does best. That's what he's known for. He's not known to be a passing quarterback. So if you're at the Tigers and he's out there, you know he's probably not going to throw the ball too many times. Terry Lindsay next to him. Simmons goes into the flat. And it's caught by Corey Turner, the second, who spins out of a tackle and picks up maybe two. First Kent of the year for the true freshman, listed at 5'7", just 136 pounds from Cedar Hill, Texas. He was, but I do, I do love that play that Bryce Edmondson just made. He ran through his block and was able to get his hands on the pass catcher to slow him up. Gain of a yard officially for Turner, second and nine. Terry Lindsay gets the carry and rides a Tiger as far as the 29. Make it the 30, call it a gain of four. Deviante Spears, the redshirt sophomore transfer from Louisiana Tech on the stop. Third and five. Simmons at the mesh point gives to Lindsay a third down and five run up the middle and the ball is out. The Tigers have it. A third and five run a conservative call and still it's a Bethune turnover and Memphis will take over with outstanding field position again. Andres Fox who knocked down the pass on the last third down comes up with the recovery. When you play hard and you do what you're supposed to do good things happen to you when you see right there Bethune Cookman trying to run right at that Memphis Tigers defense ball comes out. You see my guy Andres there, Mr. Fox. He gets down in the foxhole, jumps on it, gets the turnover. Now the Tigers with very, very good field position. But you got to love what you're seeing by my man, Mr. Fox, right there. He's shown all kinds of cognizant abilities, and he gets the turnover. Of course he gets to win the turnover. That was a savvy play. Sixth year of college football for Fox, and he had his eyes on the football all the way. Spent last year at Fresno State, four prior at Stanford, out of Mobile Christian High School in Mobile, Alabama. So it was a standout there in basketball and track and field. Back when he was 12, he finished second in the javelin in the Junior Olympics. So he's got all kinds of abilities. And again, little trickeration, finds Rock Taylor. Taylor has a couple blockers in front. Taylor inside the 15 with a flag down in his wake back at the 20-yard line. And once again, I was about to say Anthony Landfield with the absolutely great block, and it was a great block. But I Holding. Offense, number 82. 10-yard penalty, first down. What happened to the great block? It, it, he was holding. I guess that what made the block so great, because when you're holding, but it was, and it, 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 it but you love to see them blocking downfield, and you hate to see that because that's a great run, a reverse by Rock Taylor, but Landfear right there just held on just a little bit too long, but that's one of those things where I say you're blocking perfectly until your man gets there, and then your defender tries to go chase the man, and you have a tendency to reach out and grab him, and that's exactly what Anthony just did. The good news for Memphis is the block was so far downfield that a 10-yard penalty for the spot still makes it first and nine. And again to the outside, there's a catch for Watson, another one. Blake Watson has been as much a pass catcher as a ball carrier, and he motors all the way down close to the 10 with another Memphis first down. That's what I'm saying. That, see, that's great. If you can take your running back and line him up at the X receiver position on the line of scrimmage out and throw the rock to him and have him to catch it and get up the field, that's just versatility. Five carries for Watson, six catches already. Hennigan flips it to the outside. It's complete inside the five and rolled down close to the two. It's Blankamsey, who's been quiet since the early going. See if Memphis wants to go quickly again here, knock it on the door. But I love, you love to see Demir get into the action, to get some touches, to get some receptions, to make sure he stays mentally in the ball game. Instead, the Tigers huddle up. Watson is a deep back in the eye. Two touchdowns already for Blake Watson in his first half as a Memphis Tiger. Right side, Watson to the goal line. He is in. 
Blake Watson, three touchdowns in the first half. Welcome to the 901. It's a 19 point Tigers lead. Now, the blocking wasn't as great on that touchdown. He actually had to work for it because the last time we saw that power, as what I like to call it, that pro style offense, you have a fullback, you have a tailback. The hole was wide open, but right there, Blake able to get some physicality. He's able to knock heads right at the goal line and run through a couple of defenders and get yet another touchdown. All that physicality. He didn't even come into college as a running back. He was a wide receiver initially at Old Dominion. Spring practice, they needed somebody to step in as a running back in a drill. He said, I'll do it. He's never looked back. And the Tigers, even with a 19-point lead, are going for two. Tamir Blankamsey in motion. Hennigan over the middle. It's Lanfear with his first career catch, and it's good for two. Always pay attention to the tight end. Now, Seth hadn't forgotten that he does have a tight end, so you love to see that. You love to see Lanfear get kind of rewarded for the great play and the great blocking he has. Three touchdowns in the first half for Blake Watson and a three-score Memphis lead. American fans don't miss a second of the action this fall on ESPN+. Plus. You'll have 120-plus men's and women's soccer games as well as 180-plus volleyball matches to choose from. ESPN Plus is also the home of AAC. All access features including mining for greatness following Charlotte football all season long. Catch all the action here on ESPN+. Plus. Nate Gatter, Doc Holliday back with you from Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium in Memphis, which has been a fortress for the Tigers in recent years. And they are comfortably ahead, 28-7 late in the first half. Darnell Dees takes another fair catch at the goal line, and Bethune will take it from the 25. Since 2014, only Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State have won more home games than Memphis, which has won 51 here. Since 2017, the Tigers are 36-5 in this stadium, and none of those five have been by more than one score. You have to go back to the SMU game in October of 2016 for the last time Memphis lost by more than seven points in this stadium. It's been a tough place to play. The Memphis Tigers fans are always loud and rowdy, and the Memphis Tigers football players, uh, they're able to feed off this positivity and this energy here in Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium that these blue and great Tiger fans give them. Walter Simmons the third faces a blitz throws to the outside and it's too tall for the stumbling Caleb Lynham. At least he tried. They're going to have to throw the ball down the field. That's what I was about. At least he tried. You have to at least try. At least try something different. We know what he is and what he can do and what you all say he's limited up doing. But at least try to go down the field and get something going because the running game or the passing game nothing is working right. Second and ten. Jimmy Robinson the third is in there as the running back. Four man rush this time. Simmons slings it deep to the sideline. It's incomplete. A near miss. And that's the deep ball we've been thinking Bethune was going to try. His target was Jalen Terzato, six foot sophomore from Liberty City, Florida, transferred from Western Carolina. And you, this was actually a beautiful ball. I mean, great placement. You, you get it over the cornerback and you get it right in that pocket in that window before the free safety gets over there. It's actually a beautiful ball. Another third and long, which has been a nightmare for Bethune. Robinson still in as the tailback. Memphis rushes four. Allen gets pressure. Simmons pursued, still on his feet and brought down. Memphis finally gets home for Monte Hamilton, second on the team with four and a half sacks last year as the first. The hometown kid opens his account in 2023. And that's what you call it being persistent. Cormonte is like, you're not, you get away from me once, you're not going to get away from me twice. Showing that motor that he showed at Whitehaven High School that showed he showed at Ohio State now coming back home, coming here, playing for the Memphis Tigers and coming with the sack. Kobe Drake is the deep man coming off a 33-yard punt return on the last Bethune punt that set up Blake Watson's third touchdown of the first half. This is a booming punt. Takes Drake all the way back to the 26. Makes Ellington miss. Cuts upfield across the 35, and he's ridden down close to the 40. So another good return from Kobe Drake. And Memphis yet again will have good field position. In fact, this is some of the worst the Tigers have had all game. 
three touchdown lead. Memphis looking for more after this. Well, we got a lot of new faces in a lot of new leagues around college football. Of course, some departures to the Big 12 and a half dozen schools welcomed to the American. Going to be a lot of uh, action, a lot of new faces for these Memphis fans to see here at uh, Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium in years to come. Looking forward to it. Change is good. You got some great schools and good programs coming in, joining the AAC. Seth Hennigan on first down, goes to the outside for Marcelo Bussi, who is hammered as he crosses the 40 into the 43-yard line on a gain of four. First catch for Bussey, the sixth different Tiger who has snagged a pass from Hennigan. We still haven't seen Toski Dove, the Missouri transfer, but Hennigan, as you talked about, spreading it around. He is, and you talk about Bussey right there getting that catch. He almost got bust up because he did get the hammer laid on him was able to catch the ball and hold on to it. Second and six. Hennigan keeps it, throws over the middle, looking for the aforementioned Dove, just low and out in front of him. Correction, make that number seven, Christian Carter, redshirt junior from Kansas City, transferred from Division II Pittsburgh State, who was the intended receiver. Of course, those six Tigers who have caught a pass from Hennigan don't even count Anthony Lanfear, whose catch for the two-point conversion on Memphis's last drive doesn't go as an official reception of the stats. Third and six. Four-man rush. Hennigan well protected. To the outside, it's caught, and there is Toski Dove. His first catch as a Memphis Tiger after four years as a Missouri Tiger. Of course, he'll see his former school in St. Louis in a few weeks' time. And I love that route. Just 10, 12 yards up the field, stop route, like a little button hook. I love it. And again, as we mentioned earlier, fifth quarterback in Memphis history. to get over 7,000 yards. Does it in on 7,100 now. First and 10 of the 46. It's Blake Watson who's been the star of the show for the Tigers in the first half. Look at him go. Still churning his feet. And he got that one all the way down to the 41, a pickup of five. I think all five of those were after contact. And I know Seth and probably that offense, they saw that blitzer coming off the end. And you want you give the ball to Blake, and Blake pretty much replaced the defender, but the defender still able to come back and get Blake down, but Blake still picks up some very, very nice yardage. You want Harris, the safety, was the one who gets credit for the tackle. Back up tight end, Brendan Doyle in motion on second and five. Hennigan to throw. Hennigan pressure. Throws over the middle. It's tipped and intercepted. Second Seth Hennigan interception. It's picked off this time by Tyrone Franklin Jr., the senior from Montgomery, Alabama, who last year did a little bit of everything at Bethune, including attempting 30 passes. And he has his first interception. And that's exactly why defensive backs and cornerback safeties, they do the tip drill. Right there, goes right off the hands. The ball was a little high. It was a little high. Tip drill, that's exactly what you coach them up to do. Always pay attention to the ball. Pay attention to the ball, and he comes up with another huge INT. We talked about Eddie Walls earlier. He might have uh, been the one who made that throw go high, hitting Hennigan from the blind side. Simmons back in there, throws quickly into the flat and finds DeBanya Moore, his backup tight end for a gain of maybe half a yard. Sophomore out of Statesville High School, where he too was a quarterback as a recruit, but has found a home as a tight end at Bethune. Are you surprised we haven't seen any of the other Wildcats quarterbacks yet? Extremely surprised, especially since we came into this game thinking that either or was going to start, and now we we haven't seen either one of them, not even on, on the sideline uh, warming up, so I'm extremely surprised. I think Bethea and Luke Sprague, the two transfer additions, waiting for their chance behind the returner, Simmons, who spent his first year at East Carolina. Slings it out, looking short, and it's wide of Tink Boyd, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Third down and a long nine coming up. <laughs> the 
Bethune would love a first down if only not to have to give the ball back to Memphis with two and a half to go in this second quarter. The Wildcats will start with the football in the second half. They deferred after winning the opening toss. Simmons on the delayed give, and there is nothing there for Robinson. Gain of a yard, maybe two, and another Bethune punt is coming. And I love what I just saw out of that defensive front from the Memphis Tigers. They had three down linemen, they rushed four, then you had a little stunt motion on the defensive end, goes up, comes around, curls around, and makes a great play. Memphis takes a timeout to stop the clock with 2.29 to go before a Bethune punt. The average starting field position for Memphis on its seven drives today, the Bethune 49-yard line. A big part of that is Kobe Drake, but an even bigger part is the Tigers' defense. Yeah, and you can tell. That's why the score is 28-7, even though Memphis has been dominating offensively 273 total yards, and it probably would be more than that if they had to start the possessions and these drives a little deeper in their own territory. But right now, you want to have great field position. The Tigers have been getting great field position. Aside from a couple of turnovers, this game could be a lot worse than what it is. Max Tulin on for another punt. Drake is deep at his own 35-yard line. They return for Memphis. A 33-yarder and another 15-yarder. Big rush. Tigers almost got there. Tulin is leveled, and you'd have to think that's going to be roughing. Instead of Memphis taking over with the ball in plus territory and the punt that went out of bounds of the Bethune 48, it's going to be a first down and a 15-yard pickup for the Wildcats. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense, number 22. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. You got Brandon Thomas, one of the backup running backs. He's on the punt, punt return team right now. And you see everybody making plays. You want to get in there and make a, make a play, especially when you see you have a free run. But something in your head has to click when you know you don't have time to actually get there. You need to lay off a little bit, especially when your offense hasn't had any problems getting up and down the field and scoring points. That's just the second first down for Bethune tonight. Maybe even worse for the Wildcats. That's a 15 yard penalty. They only had 28 total yards before that. That's the best play they've had all game. And they can thank Brandon Tumble. Bethune has not crossed midfield. The Wildcats got to the 50 on their first possession when they did move the ball. Simmons, well protected, has some room to run and slides down close to the 45. He was about to be sandwiched by the pair of Chandler Martin and, and, and Darius Coffey. A gain of three from where he started his slide at second and seven. Taking into the last two minutes of the half, the only time now in college football that the clock will stop as it used to on a first down. By the two minutes of the second quarter and the fourth quarter. Sloppy exchange. The handoff goes to Robinson, who didn't have much of a chance after that took a second. Bobbled snap by Simmons, and it was loose for a second on the exchange. Third and six coming up. It was. Uh, you want to clean that up. They're lucky that that didn't turn into a fumble and another turnover for them before this first half is up. But uh, what can you say about this Memphis Tigers defense, though? Matt Barnes really has them playing well. He said he wanted his team, he wanted his defensive unit to play with some grit and to be gritty. So far, they're showing that in this first half. Third and six from the 44. Simmons under pressure and he's sacked. Coffee gets home. Former high school quarterback who's been involved in all three phases at Memphis, including 15 carries a year ago. He was shot out of a cannon here. That's what you call being aggressive. Matt Barnes said, you know what, we're going to bring, if we're not going to bring everybody, no, we're going to bring everybody. You know what, have a cup of coffee. That's what he just told Walt. You know what, Walt, have a cup of coffee before halftime and have one at halftime as well. And coffee coming up with a huge sack, and he should be celebrating, and he should be happy. Hey, it gave him a little jolt. I like that. I wake him up. Jolt the job. 28-7 <laughs> is the Memphis lead with 73 seconds to go, and Ryan Silverfield used his second timeout, so one remaining for Memphis. Bethune has two. Drake deep for another punt from 
Tulin, who was roughed his last time. Memphis more conservative on the rush, and Tulin gets away another really good one. His second straight booming punt, and Drake has to make a fair catch inside the 15. Back around the line of scrimmage, another couple of players were tangled up. The referees have to separate them. So by far the worst starting field position for Memphis after a 49-yard punt with great hang time and no return. How aggressive do you think the Tigers will be here from their own 14-yard line, just 66 seconds and one timeout? Well, I, I, I don't I don't know why I would I, if it was me, I would come out and throw the ball. I would come out and try to make at least a big play before this first half is up because what do you have to lose? You're thoroughly in control of this ball game, so why not take a shot down the field? Why not take a couple of shots down the field and feed your receivers and make some of them feel a little bit better than they may not feel so far, especially guys like Toski Dub. You want to give him some opportunities. Seven different receivers have caught a pass for Seth Hennigan tonight. Really eight if you count Anthony Lanfear at the two-point conversion. Joseph Skates will be a big part of that room, but you saw him a couple of minutes ago, his number six on the sideline, not wearing his pads. Hennigan under some pressure, and he's sacked. How about Amari Jones had the pick six of 69 yards for Bethune's only touchdown, and now he has his first sack of the year. And he's playing some ball. I think Bethune Cookman knew that, you know what, they're probably, the Tigers are probably going to come out and try to take a shot down the field. And Amari just playing extremely well this first half. He read that. So now if I'm the Memphis Tigers, if I'm Silverfield, if I'm Cramsey, you know what, well, that's just kind of like chill out. Uh, that's trying to run the ball a couple of times and go ahead on get it in halftime because you do not want to make a mistake right now and give right, right now and give a Thune Cookman any points when you're this late into the half. And credit to Raymond Woody Jr. here because he just took that opportunity to use his second time out. A different man might have been happy to see that clock tick down, think maybe Memphis would run the ball into the line one time, go into the halftime locker room. Instead, Woody's thinking, we haven't had the Tigers at this end of the field very often. Let's see if we can force them to punt out of their own end zone, maybe get some good field position, put a couple points on the field. Exactly, and that's exactly what you want your head coach to do. Call a timeout, coach. Give us an opportunity to possibly get back on offense or give us another opportunity to uh, regroup as a defense and, and make a play and hopefully try to get some points before this first half is up. Second and 16. Watson gets it. Watson has a hole. Watson breaks a tackle, and he's still going. A first down for Blake Watson out to the 29-yard line. How about that? A gain of 21, and a timeout as they move the chains. A timeout taken by Memphis. I mean, Blake Watson, he's just extremely impressive. You see him plant that left foot and get up and down the field, get north and south, and not only that, we have Matter here in Memphis, this bus ride. He, he took him on a ride. He took him on a Blake Watson ride. I just love the way Blake is always moving his feet and picking his knees up and getting some tough yardage. I'm a Wildcat down. So we'll see if that uh, timeout goes to Memphis or if it's an official's timeout for the injury. See a number just yet on that Wildcat. Simon Woody Jr. in his debut as Bethune's head coach down 21 with 50 seconds to go. And that is not a sight Wildcats fans want to see. Amari Hill Robinson, who has been wearing a boot these last few weeks because of a tender left ankle, making his way off the field. Looked like he was favoring his right. And you hope he's okay. He's, he's such a good player. He's someone that Bethune Cookman and Coach Woody is going to be counting on. So you hope he's okay. Hennigan to throw, steps up over the middle. He's tripped up and goes down at the 33. The clock under 40 seconds. Ryan Silverfield does have one timeout left because that was an injury. He wants his Tigers to go quickly. Inside 30 seconds. Hennigan to his left along the sideline. Too wide for Kobe Drake, his intended target. And third down coming up for Memphis with just 22 ticks left in the half. Well, Memphis is not laying down and going into the half, and they're still trying to make something happen. And you never know, one of these players could hit, uh, going to try to get steal some points going into the halftime. But even though 28 7 is a very good looking score if you're a Memphis Tiger. Third down. Watson gets the carry. Watson cuts back. He's close to first down yardage. He just will not go down. They wrap him up at the 38-yard line. He's a yard short. Nine carries 
for 86 yards and three touchdowns for Blake Watson. Not a bad welcome to Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. No Memphis running back has ever rushed for more than four touchdowns in a single game. If Watson gets his chances to tote the rock in the second half, he might well become just the third player ever in Tigers uniform to get to four touchdowns on the ground in a game. Who knows, maybe he can even become the first to get to five. Bethune battled in the first half, 69-yard pick six from Amari Jones for a big man touchdown. And Raymond Woody Jr.'s men have their work cut out for them. Bethune down 28 to seven. A solid first 30 minutes for the Memphis Tigers. Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium rocking again. Tigers all up at the half. Pretty much all Memphis in the first half from Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium in Southwest Tennessee. A 69 yard pick six for Amari Jones and Bethune. But other than that, the Tigers rolling three TDs for Blake Watson and a three score lead for the host at the break. After this, we'll catch up with Morgan Huber back in the uh, AAC Network studios. Get a look at uh, what's going on around the league and get you set for the second half still to come. Morgan Huber is next in our studios. Memphis up 28 to seven at the half. Welcome inside the American Studios, I'm Morgan Uber. A new look and a new era in the American, which is the same for seven American football programs with head coaches in their first seasons. We asked for their recipes for success in year one, and one thing is for certain, don't call it a rebuild. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to use that word. They can, and then maybe in their programs is rebuild. For us, it's a remodel. I think the unknown is probably the biggest challenge. I think it, it comes down to little things. It's a new football team. There is no last year's team. Any chance you have to work with a, a coach like Nia Matalolo, you, you take as much as you can from him. I think you take the things that, that you loved about what he did, the things that, you know, as an assistant coach, you think you might want to do slightly different. Every program's a little bit different when you go into it your first year and I think it's so crucial those first three months to kind of figure out what the problems are and, and then just to build relationships in the buildings. One, two, three, first thing I said was press pause, take a deep breath, you guys are here, there's a coaching change, I'm here, maybe let's see if we should work together. First meeting I ever did, I went in there, I said, just because I have a title or I accomplished some stuff does not mean you should trust me. Not a person in this room, not a coach, not a player should trust me. That's earned, and I need to earn your trust. And as I do that, I hope you earn my trust. You gotta build those relationships very early and very quickly, and that's hard to do, uh, especially with the transfer portal. You know, when, when there's a coaching change, uh, I could have gone on the road my first week on the job, and I didn't. I stayed back and I met with as many current players on our roster as I could. It's just so unique nowadays that, um, that you really have to engulf yourself within the program and the kiddos. Where you're constantly communicating with the kids and then sometimes it's anticipating a more positive communication. Even though sometimes you gotta correct some problems. There's a constant positive energy with everything that goes on. There's an accountability factor that goes into all of it, but it's a bunch of guys that are trying to do right and trying to get better every single day. Coaches don't win games, players do. And you have to have really good players that are well adjusted, that that know you love and care for them. And you have to and then you have to prove that. And if you do that, re, there's no such thing as a rebuild. You can hear more from these seven new head coaches by watching the entire feature on our YouTube page. And be sure to keep it right here on ESPN Plus as we've got much more coming up for you right after this. Memphis up 28 to seven at the half from Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. The Tigers, with the exception of that one pick six, have dominated. 297 yards for Memphis, just 24 for Bethune-Cookman. What a relaxing evening for Memphis fans out here at the stadium. Not a whole lot to worry about in those first 30 minutes. We're going to look back at the highlights and the stats. We'll hear from Doc Holliday on his thoughts of the first 30 minutes and the 30 still to come when we return. You're watching The American on ESPN+. Plus. 28-7 Memphis lead at the half, and Doc Holliday, the biggest reason for that, Blake Watson nearly 90 yards and three TDs. Blake Watson told me that rock. Blake Watson doing everything he did at Old Dominion, 
doing it right here in big Memphis, and he's doing it even bigger. Nine rushes, 75 yards, three touches on the ground. And not even this, but this is probably one of the most impressive runs I've seen him do the whole first half because he had two dudes hanging on him, and he said, man, I'm going to drop you and wet you off like wet clothes. Get up off of me. I just love that. Get a look at the numbers from the first half. Uh, it's safe to say they favor the Titans. Straight domination, 297 total yards, 116 rushing yards. You got Blake Washington and Sutton Smith combining to give you that 181 passing yards. You see the two turnovers from the Tigers, but other than that, straight dominant offensive and defensive first half for the Memphis Tigers. You already know Doc Holliday. I'm Nate Getter. So glad to have you with us this evening. Watson, the first Memphis Tiger to have three rushing touchdowns and a half since a guy named Daryl Henderson. I think things worked out okay for him in the league. And Daryl Henderson used to tote that rock. He was at a very explosive running back. So when you come to a new program and come to a new city and you're introducing yourself to new people, you want to put your best foot forward, Nate, and that's exactly what Blake Watson is doing. Seth Hennigan, not a bad first half. He was moving the ball around like we knew he would. Two interceptions, neither one totally his fault, but not the first 30 minutes he would have won. No, it's not, but that, the good thing about it is that his team is winning. His team is totally in control, 287. Turned the ball over a couple of times. You don't want the interceptions on your stat sheet. He has it on his stat sheet, but he would prefer to have that W and the way it's looking right now, the Memphis Tigers are headed towards that W. Bethune Cookman's going to get the ball to start this second half. You have to think we're going to see a change at quarterback for the Wildcats at some point just to switch it up. You would think, but you, you never know. You may want to stick with Walt Simmons and just let the other two guys just hang back because chances are that Bethune is not going to come back and win this ball game, but we shall see. Ball in the air for Darnell Deans, who takes another fair catch. And Bethune will start from its own 25-yard line. Not much on offense for the Wildcats in the first half. Just 24 total yards, only two through the air. But Simmons is going to stay out there. This is a little surprising based on what Raymond Woody Jr. told us, that he was, if anything, expecting to have all three guys touch the field. He wanted to see them prove themselves. Maybe what we're finding out is that in the back of his mind, he was thinking he wanted to give Simmons a chance to be the guy, and this is what that looks like. It's either that or our, our chances of winning this ball game are extremely slim. So let me hold back Ty Leak and the other quarterback for the next game. But I don't think that's what he did, but that could be a, a mode of thinking because you know, it's, I don't understand right now. Jimmy Robinson, the third, gets the first carry of the second half. Call it a gain of three for Robinson. It'll be second down and seven. We did see Jaden Bivens as the starter. He got the first carry for Bethune-Cookman, but that's the only one since then been mostly Robinson, although Bivens went for eight yards. He's the leading rusher still for the Wildcats, even though he has just one of their 15 carries. That says a lot. Simmons, another give to Robinson, and very, very little there for him. Falls forward for a yard. It's going to be third down and six. And these third downs, and even medium, let alone third and long, are what Bethune just can't take. No, you can't. And you look at that last defensive play right there. There were 10 Memphis Tigers right there around that football. And that's exactly what you want if you're a defensive coach. And that's something that Matt Barnes has been stressing. And right there on that play and this entire game, the Memphis Tigers defense has been showing that. To be fair to Walter Simmons, he did throw a good-looking deep ball in the first half for Terzato that was broken up. Third and six, Simmons under immediate pressure, dumps it off. Look at that, the lineman eligible. It's not going to get the first down, but how about that deceptive design? We don't have a number 34 on the roster we were given from Bethune-Cookman, so that was a deception in more ways than one. And that's a big that's a big deception. It's kind of hard to deceive someone and sneak up on someone when you're that big, but he did sneak up on him. And you know what? When you're a defender, man, you, you want to be tough, but you come up and hit a, a big dog that big. I mean, that's a great play, but to have to run into a big man that big, but they stopped him, forced a punt. Seven yards on three plays, but Tula now to punt again for Bethune. Low snap that he mishandled for a moment, and he skewed that punt completely off the side of his foot. That is a short punt. Bethune was at the 32. The referee is still waiting to make the signal. Ryan Silverfield has made up his mind. He says it should be at the 41. The officials are going to put it at the 45. So a punt of just 13 yards for Tulin, who has boomed a couple tonight, but this was not one of them. 
Yeah, it's just unfortunate right here. The snap is extremely low, and that's that's tough when you're a punter because you want everything to be in rhythm. You have a routine. He has to squat down to get it and then get his motion back up. And just a poor punt, but it's just poor execution on the long snapper. So I blame the long snapper more than the punter in that situation. Big cheer at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. In part, it's because Seth Hennigan and the Memphis offense are retaking the field for the first time in the second half. In larger part, it's because Penny Hardaway was just up on the video board. First and 10 of the 45. Excellent field position yet again for Memphis. To the near side, it's Rock Taylor has another catch, his sixth already in this game. Just 20 last season. It's safe to say we're seeing what Tim Cramsey promised us. Memphis offensive coordinator who said it's a different Rock Taylor. And it's just nice, you know, just a 10 yard out route. Real simple. DB playing off of him, playing soft coverage, and Seth Hennigan and Rock taking advantage of him. Sets up second and three. Sutton Smith, the ball carrier. Look at that hole. Sutton Smith untouched inside the 30, and he slips down to the 28. And you got to love that, but I love jo Jonah Gamble. Jonah, the offensive tackle over there, just making a great block, sealing, out, sealing off that entire side of that Bethune-Cookman defensive line, and just nothing but space and opportunity to run. Nine yards for Smith and a Memphis first down. Hennigan wants straight to come in tight. Smith gets it again. Look at the blocking again. Cuts it back. Jitters inside the 20 and down to the 15. Sutton Smith rips off another one, and the Tigers move the chains again. The only thing about that, that's a nice run from Sutton Smith, but I, he, just, he did just a little bit too much dancing right there. You want him to be a little bit more decisive right there. I see what he's trying to do, but you have to give credit to that offensive line. They are in total control of that Wildcats defensive line. Right Gains of 9 and 14 for Smith on the last two plays. Memphis has run for 139 yards. Here comes some more. Smith inside the 10. Smith slips a tackle to the 5. Smith still fighting inside the 5 yard line. Another 11 yards for Sutton Smith. First and goal for Memphis at the four. And that's an outstanding run right there. Memphis Tigers going with their stretch zone, and that's exactly what happened. And this is the, the, the decisiveness, decisiveness I'm talking about with Sutton Smith. He gets the rock, gets outside, and finishes the run extremely hard. And right now, might as well feed him and let him get the touchdown as well. Blake Watson had three in the first half. Sutton Smith opens his account in 2023. Do a little dance, young fella. Memphis on the board early to start this second half. That's an impressive. That's an impressive drive. That's that's how you want to come out once you get the ball again in the second half and continue to stay in control. And this game been out of hand. It's pretty much really out of hand right now. And Sutton Smith making a really really great cut. Get to the place. Seth Hennigan started with a seven yard completion to Rock Taylor. The remaining 38 yards, all Sutton Smith, all on the ground. And the extra point tacked on by Morgan. Memphis has made it a 28 point lead just four minutes into the second half. Sutton Smith getting in on the act. The Memphis Tigers passing game was the talk coming into this. Four rushing touchdowns for the Tigers, 154 yards on the ground. It's all Memphis early in the third quarter. The Tigers added another one out of the half. Nate Gatter, Doc Holliday back with you here at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. It's time for what we're calling Taste of the American. And you're the Memphis boy. I, I heard you might be orchestrating this. Well, you know, when, when, you, when you're a grown man like me and you're Memphis made, you know, Memphis is known for great barbecue, great food, and Corky's is one of those restaurants where when you come to Memphis, you have to go to Corky's and get you some barbecue. You're from St. Lou, right? You from, I am. You're from the St. Lou. But taste this Corky's. I don't know if you ever had this Corky's, but this is what you got to come back and get, man. The opening kickoff goes for a touchback. All right, I'm going to have to work my way into these Corky's nachos here. This is dangerous, eating on camera. I don't know if I've no, done this ahead. before. You, you got to oh. get it, man. You got to oh. get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know when you know it's good, the other person be looking like that. Be looking. <laughs> <laughs> they look, it look, it look like that, man. I'm telling you, that Corky's barbecue, this is a Memphis staple right here. It, 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 it wouldn't go. want a little bit of that. Go. Oh, I, go. I got the suit on. I don't know if I can go for that bite, but that, this, this is not bad, huh? Well, you know what? That you eat those nachos. It's just like the Memphis Tigers telling Bethune, this is nacho day. Nacho <laughs> day. Nacho day, man. This is nacho day, man. This is pretty special. Nacho day. You and got to tell me what you think. All right. I, oh, they're fantastic. I had a couple bites of Corky's earlier. 
getting my introduction to, to a little Memphis barbecue. This is next level. Now, get, see, the thing, and, and it's, it's hard for me. I'm disciplined now because I want some so bad, but I just hit 204, 205, and if I eat this Corky's, I'll be 210. I just turned 50, so, but it's, 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 it's And a, you're trying to tell me you couldn't get through the hole. No, Come on. No, man, I'm just saying it, it, it looks so good. And so, see, you see that? See, when you get that on your hand. Look at this. I'm not going to tell you what you're supposed to, how you're supposed to get that off your fingers because this Memphis is finger licking good. So you might need to get some napkins. This is a nice suit. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to work for me. It's all good, though, man. But the people at Cork is they great restaurant, great legendary restaurant. They have great food, man. So I know I always enjoy it. I concur. I'm not as Memphis as my man over here, Doc Holliday. But uh, I can say at least the Corky's brings the heat. Memphis still bringing the heat out here. We still <laughs> certainly true. A couple of first downs here for Bethune Cookman. It's going to be second down and long coming up for the Wildcats down by 28. In the early going of the third quarter. You good? You still eating? That Memphis I, Tigers defense still eating out there. You still eating too, Nate? I'm going to be snacking, I think, throughout <laughs> the rest of the game. I just got to figure out the what I'm going to do with the, what's left over on my fingers. That's, that's the issue. Yeah, you need some napkins, man. You need some napkins. Simmons goes to the outside. A completion close to first down yardage. It's going to be third down and short. Catch by Davino Ellington. And I, I love the fact that Walt Simmons, he's still out here playing hard. Bethune is still out here playing hard. They are not giving out up. And Davino, hey, look, man, this is the time when you have your opportunity to come in and make some plays, and they're still trying to make some plays. Third and two. Simmons hands off. Bivens is stacked up. Nowhere to go. That read option worked for Bethune on the first drive. Maybe the second hasn't worked since. Hey, just told you, barbecue nachos. At Memphis Tigers defense, this nacho day. Barbecue nacho, barbecue nacho day, Wildcat. Uh, that Memphis Tigers, they are really feeling confident and really, really feeding off this momentum right now. This Tigers defense has been playing tough the entire night, and you like to see if you're a Memphis Tiger fan that that defense is not letting up at all. Another tool and punt coming. Drake is back for another Tigers return. Inside his own 20. Tulin's had a couple of great ones, a couple of sloppy ones. That got on the ground again. This time he collects himself. Gave a lot of time for his return or coverage team to get down there. And Drake's takes a fair catch at the 22. We'll step aside. Memphis up 35 to 7. Finally a break. I can get into this Corky. A look at some scores from around the American Conference. Really not a lot of surprises. Western Kentucky won a good one, 41-24 over South Florida down in Bowling Green. SMU comfortable. Texas, of course, over Rice again. Not a lot of chances for the Owls, but they keep on coming. And it's, it's just that that week, you know, you, you uh, play a lot of games around this time of the year. You're looking for uh, one upside or one upset to really catch your eye. Tulane's going to be coming here to Memphis in a, a short time. Houston just a three-point lead on FS1 over UTSA. That's a good one. North Texas was supposed to be on the Memphis schedule this year. In fact, this game was supposed to be against North Texas before the Mean Green joined the American Conference and uh, forced a change. And again on the give to Watson, his first carry of the second half, and that was not how he wanted it to go. Pursued from behind and wrapped up by a couple of Wildcats. No, you like that. That's a, a Jakey Brown, man. Coming off that end, showing some aggressiveness, showing that I'm still in this. And Blake Watson, he hasn't been, I don't think he's had a tackle for loss the entire game, but had one right there. True freshman, J.K. Brown out of Houston. Heading into throw over the middle. It's caught on the move by Blankemsee. Reverses field. Makes a man miss. Blankemsee back to the near side and finally tracked down close to the 45-yard line by Ebenezer Debula. Always a good sign when a, a big defensive lineman is running down a receiver. That's usually a big play. It is, but you see Demir, you see why the Tigers are so high on him. He showed you his playmaking ability, his ability to see the field and pick up some yardage. And you do like the fact that the defensive lineman is still pursuing the play and making the tackle that far down the field. First down for Memphis at the 44. 
Play fake to Watson. Outside for Kobe Drake, who's had a nice game. He's done it in special teams, and he's done it on offense as well. Nine yards of the quick hitter from Hennigan. Kobe Drake, he has some good feet. He has some good feet. When I see guys like that, I call them. They, they're they good with the Sammy Davis. They have the because Sammy Davis, good, good, good tap dance. They have, they have good, good feet. Drake has some good feet. You got a name for everything, don't you? Sometimes, but just whatever pops in my head, man. You know, it comes out. Second down and one. Hennigan off play action again. Blankemsey streaking wide open down the middle. 47 yards. Hennigan to Blankemsey. How about that for Seth Hennigan's first passing touchdown of the season? Memphis wanted explosive plays. How about that for an explosion? That's the kind of explosion you want. These are the type of plays that the Memphis Tigers really couldn't have last year because they really didn't have anybody to make them. And they said Blankemsey was one of those players that they were going to count on to make these big explosive plays. And all it was was a simple play action. Simple play action at the beer run wide open. And you see just Hennigan gets in it, throws the ball, and just has to lay it up there perfectly in the mirror. He's in what I call the place of point six points. It's a touchdown. Morgan adds the extra point. First touchdown pass for Seth Hennigan this season. It's 47 yards to Demir Blankemsey, his first in the blue and gray. Busted coverage by Bethune. Seth Hennigan's not going to miss too many of those. Touchdown pass number 48 of his career. Six twenty-seven left in the third quarter. Memphis has already added two touchdowns since the half to make it a 35-point lead. Just four plays under two minutes to go 78 yards, culminating in a career-long 47-yard catch for Demir Blankemsey for the touchdown. A lot to like on the offensive side of the ball for the Tigers tonight, Doc. Oh, yeah, easy money. If you look at it, look at the yardage they put up. 420 total yards right now, 266 passing yards. They run for 154 yards. That's what you like. But when I look at the rushing yards, I like the fact that both running backs are, they have a good yards per average every time they touch that rock. But Seth Hennigan getting what he wants. The receiver getting what they want. Defense not giving them what they want. So it's just a not get what you want, get what you want type day, if that makes sense to you. Certainly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sounds perfect. good in my head. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good in my head. <laughs> Simmons is going to come uh, right back out. To be fair, Bethune uh, did put together one or two uh, good things on that last drive, had a couple of positive plays, but there's just been very little for the Wildcats offense to hang their hat on to this point, just 49 total yards in two and a half quarters. Yeah, I mean, you know, they really haven't made any major mistakes. It's just that. Uh, they're outmanned. They're outmanned right now. Memphis is just the biggest, stronger, better football team. Basel in motion gets the swing pass across the 30 out to the 32. Grad transfer from Washington State who could have a couple of years of eligibility left. Jojo Basel from Naples, Florida. And that's a great positive play. Screen, catch it, get up the field, pick up eight yards, almost move the chains. That's what you want to see, especially during this time with the game like this. And so far, the hands if players are going to continue to play hard. Second and two at the 33, and flags come out. Been a really clean game. We haven't seen a lot of penalties. False start. Offense number 66. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Memphis is used to playing clean football. The Tigers were one of the most rarely penalized teams in all of FBS last year. Only four penalties per game on average, sixth fewest in the country. Meanwhile, Bethune really struggled with penalties, and Raymond Woody Jr. said he wanted to clean that up. Wildcats have done it. That's just their third penalty in this game for 10 total yards. Simmons under immediate pressure from Coffey, and he throws that one to the feet of Basel incomplete. So after an eight yard swing pass on first down, the Wildcats are nonetheless looking at third and seven. Matt Barnes not taking anything for granted. He's continuing to bring the heat, continuing to bring the pressure, sending Coffee on another blitz right there. Almost got there, but he did force Walt Simmons to get that ball out of his hand before he wanted to release it and get incompletion. Just saw a shot of 22 in blue a moment ago. Jalen Allen captain on this defense. Six here from Humble, Texas, who led the team with five sacks a year ago. He's been quiet so far tonight. Wonder if this would be a moment for him to pin his ears back on third and seven. Simmons gets it off. Well protected. Throws, and there was nothing there. 
He was trying to go to Amari Stewart on the slant, who was locked up by Julian Barnett, redshirt senior from Detroit, in his third season now as a Tiger. He was limited last year by injury. This is great coverage. And these cornerbacks have been playing some outstanding coverage and outstanding football tonight. Barnett getting in there. I mean, he's right. He ran the route with the receiver, and he possibly could have picked it off, but you can't cover a receiver better than what Barnett just did. So even after eight yards on first down, Thune is going to have to punt it again. Just three first downs in this game for the Wildcats. 22 for Memphis. Good snap for Tulin this time. Gets away a nice punt. Wobbling spiral. Drake takes a fair catch at the 33. The Memphis defense just fantastic, Doc. Only 57 total yards against the Tigers. And they're pitching a shutout. Bethune Cookman does have the seven points on the board. That was on a pick six. So the Memphis defense has not conceded a single point yet. No, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to come out this first game, show that this defense is a lot better than it was last year. I know Matt Barnes said he wanted his team to do better on first and second down. I think we've seen that tonight. He said he wanted his DBs to cover better because they lost a lot of man to man and one on ones last year. I think we've definitely seen that tonight. So we've seen this Memphis Tigers defense put up the kind of performance that you want to put up in this first game, even though it's against, you know, somebody you say you're supposed to beat. But the good thing about that, playing a team that you're supposed to beat, is that you do actually beat them and you beat them bad. Sutton Smith in the backfield next to Seth Hennigan. Bussy in motion. Smith gets the carry up the middle, puts his foot in the ground, cuts close to the 40 where he's wrapped up and spun down at the 39-yard line after a gain of a half dozen. That's more what you were talking about in the first half from Sutton Smith. Make his one cut and get north-south. Exactly. Be more decisive, and he did it again right there because when you are decisive, you make that one cut, you're not thinking. You're, you have a better chance of picking up some positive yardage, and not only that, popping one and hitting one big, and you saw that right from Sutton Smith right there. Second and four. Hannigan keeps it and throws it. Toski Dove is wide open. Toski Dove inside the 30, inside the 20. Dove swallowed up inside the 10. That's just, that's just a beautifully executed, beautifully drawn up play. You see Seth Henning and he fakes the handoff. That's the play action. Then he keeps it. So the defender is thinking, is he running? Can he run it? And he could have ran it, but Seth ran it perfectly. He saw the defender coming up to him. He saw Toski Dub get behind the defense, pitches it to him, just tosses it to him perfectly, perfectly, and a big game. 55 yards from Henning to Dub. That 47-yarder from Hennigan to Blankemsey didn't last long as the longest pass play of the year for the Tigers. Smith hesitates in the hole, and he swallowed up for a gain of maybe a yard. No gain looks like it. Second and goal coming up from the seven. Hennigan now with 320 yards through the air, making 321 for the game. The 11th time in his career he's gone over 300 yards passing already. To the near side, and an easy walk-in touchdown. How about that design? Easy as you like for the number seven, Christian Carter. And that's the play that was called for Christian Carter. Just a quick little, basically a screen. You throw it to him, you get some blockers out there in front. He, get it, he gets a great block, he makes a great decision, makes a cut, gets up the field, and no one there but himself and the paint on the end zone. And you can see it right here. Although Seth, just, that's really just a screen pass. Screen pass, throw it to him, you get the blocker right in front, and he walks in for an easy touchdown. Second time Carter's been involved in the passing game tonight. He's a little buried on the depth chart, not on the Tigers too deep, but with no Joseph Skates tonight getting a chance to shine and making the most of it. Morgan tacks on yet another extra point. Another four-play drive for Memphis. This one 67 yards again under two minutes. This Tigers offense was more what you'd call methodical in the first half. This third quarter, they've shown the explosion. I mean, they are. And, you, and there it is again right there. It's just, they're showing what they're capable of. They're showing all the different playmakers they have on this offense, and that's something Silverfield said he wanted to showcase. He said that Tiger fans were going to see a show on Saturday, and right now, 
Tiger fans are getting a show. He's showing these different weapons he, he has, and he wants to show them off because he knows in order to win the AAC, he's going to need all these players to step up. And you have a lot of these players getting some experience, some playing time experience tonight. Guys, you're going to be counting on. So uh, this Tigers offense has looked extremely efficient, like you said, in this third quarter. Ryan Silverfield's Tigers went three and five in the American a year ago. That four game losing streak from October into November really cost them. But they were only blown out in one game all season. That was the opener at Mississippi State. Three of those American losses to Houston, SMU and East Carolina were by a total of six points. So you could have swung the season and bet ten and three. And that's part of the reason Memphis was picked fourth in the American this year with a first place vote behind the favorites Tulane, UTSA and SMU. How do you feel at this point? Not sure how much you take away from this game that changes your preseason perception one way or the other. But how do you feel at this stage about the Tigers' chances of contending for an American title this year? Oh, they have a chance because last year, even though they finished seven and six, they did go to the uh, first responder serve Pro Bowl and dominate Utah State. And some of the games they lost last year, the Tigers just they didn't have they didn't finish strong. They were in control and they lost a lot of those games late. So uh, they have a real good chance, especially with the new look AAC to end up as champions. Jaden Bivens back in there next to Walter Simmons the third. Simmons to the air slings it all the way to the outside where it's pulled in by Ellington down the sideline close to midfield. He nearly put his knee on the ground as he made the catch but instead Ellington goes to the 48 for a pickup of 23. But do is still playing man. And right now when you have a new coach first year head coach Raymond Woody Jr. You have a lot of new players. He wants to see, are you going to continue to play the entire 60 minutes, even though you're facing adversity, even though this game is out of hand, because he's going to go back and watch game film, and they're all going to watch together, and he's going to point you out if you're out there being lackadaisical. There's going to be a review here. Nate Black, our referee, was buzzed by the replay official to check if Ellington's knee was down. As it stands, 23 yards on that play. Before that snap, Bethune had only 13 passing yards for the entire game. Almost tripled their prior output through the air. But this might be coming back to somewhere close to the 30-yard line and maybe a gain of only five or six if Ellington's knee did, in fact, touch the ground. And if, it, and if this does come back, if you're Bethune cooking, because they pretty much lost every challenge review tonight, Memphis Tigers pretty much one, but even if it does come back, I just like the fact that those young men, those young Royals out there for Bethune Cookman, they're still putting forth an effort, they're still playing hard, they're still trying to do something because in their heads, I've been a player out there. You don't think the game is out of hand, even though it's out of hand, but you're not thinking that you don't have a chance to come back and win this ball game. So Nate Black over there getting a look. Chance to see it from this angle. Look to me like a knee is down. His knee is definitely down. Pass was complete with the runner's knee down to the 30-yard line. It will be second down. It's a shame for Ellington and Bethune. Instead of 23 yards, it's a pickup of just five. It'll be second down at five now coming up for the Wildcats. Simmons has a little more arm talent than I expected, though, based on our conversation with Raymond Woody Jr. He's been able to sling it out there. That's a long throw, and he made it on the line. It is. I mean, I think, you know, it's probably it's probably the, the accuracy, but as you said, he showed some great accuracy right there, and especially specifically in the first half on a long ball. So he's shown some flashes. Simmons again to the air, and that is way off the mark in the direction of Tink Boyd, the grad transfer from Virginia Tech. We cursed him. Yeah, and, and those sidearm motion, man. That side, that's the sidearm motion he has going on. And, uh, and you watch it. He, the defender was right there. Looked like he may have, could have got a hand on it, but that little sidearm motion, he, he just, he just missed it. I mean, he, he just missed. It. That's one of the ones he just missed. Third down has not been kind to either offense, really, but in particular to Bethune. Third and five. Tigers bring four. 
Good out route complete to Dakari Allen Johnson, who's popped after picking up the first down, and a flag comes in at the end of the play. This could well be a 15-yarder. No, it's going to be offensive pass interference based on the initial indication against Bethune. What a shame on what looked like a well-executed route. What's well, a little rub route? He's out there with another receiver, and the little other receivers is interference on the defensive back. That's why he was able to come so wide. Pass interference. Offense, Offense number four. 15-yard penalty. Third down. Ellington gets the penalty. Instead of a Bethune first down, Wildcats have to back up 15 yards from the previous spot. Well, it looks like Davino started blocking while the ball was still in the air, and that's exactly what he was doing. He was they was trying to they were trying to clear out for him, and yeah, it was a pick, pick play, but you can't engage in blocking while the ball is still in the air. So that's. It's an obvious call is right in front of everyone. Memphis way off the line on third and 20. Simmons steps up, runs away from Ellison. He was past the line of scrimmage when he threw that ball. It's incomplete either way, and there comes the flag. I would imagine Memphis will be content with the result of the play either way. Simmons looked like he was around the 16-yard line when he let that ball go. Line of scrimmage was exactly the 15. But I like the I like the discipline of Bryce Edwards. He could have easily laid into Simmons and it would have been a penalty, but he laid off. Him. That's why Memphis is one of the least penalized teams last year because of making smart plays like that. A play that wasn't a play because he did lay off off, off, off of him when somebody else would have had the tendency to want to take a shot with the quarterback. It's such a challenge, especially with the physicality preached to defensive players to be engaged like that and then still pull up at the last moment. Illegal four pass. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Includes a loss of down. It's fourth down. So a five yard penalty and again a loss of down on a third down penalty for Bethune. That happened early on in the game as well. So the Wildcats will be punting from deep in their own territory. It's effectively a four-yard penalty because they assessed it from the spot of the foul. Hey, did you hear the you got some good net mice down there? Like somebody was getting pinched, they were screaming so hard. He was probably mad at the call. Did you hear that? He, he was trying to show his lungs. <laughs> Tulin to punt. Drake is standing right at midfield. Gonna have a chance at a return. Kobe Drake steps out of a tackle, has a little room, and run down to the 41. Kobe Drake has been good as Memphis's punt returner early on in this season. 40-yard punt, 10 yards on the return. And Memphis takes back over with a buck 58 to go in the third quarter. You'd think we're getting to the last possession or two for the ones on offense. Yeah, but if you're the ones, you know what? We want all, we want all the time and get all the stats we can possibly get, but... I can see that probably Hennigan and the ones will probably go another series or two then you kind of pull them, especially after you get into the fourth quarter, get around that 11, 12 minute mark. There's no no need to play them any further because this game is in hand. The sixth time tonight Memphis has started at midfield or better. Sutton Smith, the ball carrier, reverses field, has some room. Pass Hill Robinson down the sideline and out of bounds at the 25 after a gain of 16. That's something you can't coach. That's that straight vision. Straight vision. We talk about the decisiveness, and once again, Sud Smith plant with the left. He sees the cutback, takes the cutback, but it's one thing to see the cutback and be able to get to it. He gets to it, gets in the space, and gets a big yardage carry. Very impressive run by Sud. 13 carries, 89 yards for Smith. Gets it again, and he's got the Tigers knocking on the door of the red zone after four more. Sutton getting this work in the third quarter, but you know Blake is probably sitting there like, man, look, I, I can almost got 100 yards too, but Sutton is just 11 yards. Yeah, I wonder if they get down close, if they'll give Blake Watson a chance to tie a program record sitting on three rushing touchdowns for the first half. Smith has added one already here in the second. 
three-star out of George Walton High School. Had offers from Nebraska and Louisville, among others. Chose Memphis. Ryan Silverfield's been very high on him this year. Raised him consistently this summer. And you can see Smith can do it different ways. Showing a little bit of north-south in addition to that vision and ability to bounce it outside. It's going to be third down in a yard. I saw something right there, though. Even though Sutton Smith is continuing to run that rock, Marcelo busting the receiver out there, blocking. I mean, staying on his man, blocking and blocking hard. That's how you get big plays and get big runs when your receivers on the outside block down the field. And the receivers for the Memphis Tigers continue to block down the field. Memphis does not have to snap it again in this third quarter. Tigers will anyway. Right up the middle for a first down. Memphis moves the chains on the first carry of the night for Katravion Hargrove. Deep on that running back depth chart, but we've talked about how deep the Memphis running back room is all of a sudden with the addition of Blake Watson, the maturation of Sutton Smith. And the Tigers have dominated this game on the ground and through the air. 512 yards in three quarters. Memphis puts up three touchdowns in the third and leads it by 42. Next Saturday, an exciting slate of AAC football action for you. 24th ranked Tulane at home against number 22 Ole Miss out of the SEC. 3.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and the app. Texas State and UTSA also at 3.30 Eastern over on ESPN+. Plus. Then at 6 Eastern, SMU heads north to Norman to tangle with 20th ranked Oklahoma on ESPN+. Plus. Start of the fourth quarter here in Memphis where the hometown Tigers lead at 49-7 and could yet add on. First and 10 at the 14. Handoff to the outside, and a flag is down. That'll negate a short gain that would have been for Katravian Hargrove. Offense number 66, 10 yard penalty, first down. Hargrove getting his first chances now. Doesn't look like Blake Watson's going to get a shot at uh, TD number four. And he should. You can't, you can't be box score Watson. You look right here, and just a little zone, trying to get around, and yeah, 66, yeah, you're holding, yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. That's a left tackle, McKaylin Pounders, redshirt sophomore out of Mississippi. Hands on the hip, a lot of times I'm a little windy. Holding means a lot of time I'm a little windy, but he's been putting in work all night. First and 20 now for the Tigers, back to the 24. Hennigan to the flat, high for Carter and incomplete. Coverage by Iverson Clement, grad transfer, who's back in Florida where he started his college career as a Gators running back before moving on to Temple where he made the switch to DB. Look at the hit here on Carter. Still laying the wood, but I'm, 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 I was wondering if the Tigers were a little discouraged because the scoreboard said it was first and 72. I don't, you know, I would have had to go through the end zone and, and end up on Southern somewhere to get a first down. Yeah, that's going to be tough. <laughs> Sutton Smith, he's got a lot of room. Sutton Smith, oh, almost stepped out of that last tackle. But he's brought down by Joshua Thornhill, Richard sophomore from Liberty Township, Ohio, after a scamper down to the 11 for 14 yards. A lot to like from Sutton Smith in this second half. A, 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 a whole lot to like. And Sutton Smith, once again, he finds the space. He gets to the space. Just got a shoestring tackle. If not, he probably would have had another touchdown. But I can't give enough credit to this Memphis Tigers offensive line. They have really stepped up and shown their dominance. 111 yards on the ground now for Smith. Third and seven. Head again to the air. Toski Dove knocked out of bounds with a first down. Needed seven, got seven. It's a veteran route. That's a dance route. I mean, that's what you call chemistry. That's what having a, a dance partner. We know we need seven yards. That's a five to seven yard out. They do it all the time. They did it in rhythm and on timing. And you can see that they probably work on that route and work on that a lot because it happens so fluid. Denton, Texas connection as well between those two. Dove in his sixth season of college football now. Caught 86 passes at Missouri, including three touchdowns, all in big games. LSU, Tennessee, South Carolina. Carter in motion, handoff to Smith, 
hit at the line of scrimmage and fights forward for a gain of a yard. Second and goal coming up. Thornhill, who had the tackle on that Big Smith run a couple of plays ago, got the initial penetration. And I love that. I love that physicality. He is not giving up. He's showing you sudden. If you want to get in this end zone, I'm gonna make you earn it. I'm gonna make you earn it. I'm gonna also make you get in that ice tub tomorrow. I love that hit right there. That is what you go to the film room and you watch and you say, you say, look, coach, I need some more time. I'm still playing hard. I'm putting my helmet down and I'm laying the wood. Smith again. The I formation has worked for Memphis tonight. Five rushing touchdowns for the Tigers. Three for Watson in the first half, two for Smith in the second half, and the Tigers have put 55 and counting on Bethune. Yeah, Sutch Smith, he's a different type of running back, man. I love his elusiveness. I love how shifty he is. But most of all, I love his vision. Now, Blake Watson has great vision as well. But the way Sutch Smith is getting now, this, this was kind of designed to go outside. But the linebacker doing his job, he takes the outside away, forces Sutch Smith to cut up field. He cuts up field, gets into the end zone, and here we are, 55, 50, 67. And Sutch Smith is over 100 yards rushing with a couple of touchdowns, so he's feeling good. Seth Morgan adds the extra point, his seventh of the night, make it 75 converted in a row for Morgan. All Watson in the first, all Smith in the second, all Tigers tonight. The lights are always brighter on opening night, Doc, but the Tigers have not shied away. It was uh, more of a methodical first half, but Memphis has scored four touchdowns in not even 17 and a half minutes in the second half. Left no doubt tonight. Well, Memphis doing exactly what they were expected to do. They were expected to win this game. This game was scheduled so they can win this game. And they've come out and shown that they have a propensity to winning big. Not It's, it's not the fact that they're winning this game is how they, they're, they're winning this game. It's just straight domination, man. I mean, 63 total yards, they're still a division, you know, a, a high division level football team. You know, SWAC is a, it's a nice conference, man. I mean, Bethune-Cookman has picked the finish last, and I think the, the East of SWAC, but still, to come out and to dominate a team like this, this is what you want to see if you're Ryan Silverfield, but Coach uh, Woody, you know, he don't want to lose his first game like this, uh, but I know he wants to see and watch his players to see which ones are going to continue to fight. Bethune is going to make the change at quarterback that we might have expected before this. Luke Sprague, Redshirt junior from Springfield, Pennsylvania, who spent last season at Nassau Community College on Long Island, where he threw for more than 2,300 yards and 21 touchdowns in 10 games. Got to get his chance now at the helm of the Wildcats attack. I'm just glad we get a chance to use that beautiful graphic, man. Sprague under pressure right away, and he is dropped. Jalen Joyner was the one who ultimately put him down. Welcome to FBS, Luke Sprague. Well, the thing about it, Luke Sprague joins the game, and Jalen Joyner says, look, I'm, I'm really going to show you what to join. I mean, this is just, this is almost assault. This, this, this almost, yeah, this is almost misdemeanor assault. See, in Shelby County, they give you 11 months and 29 days for that. If you did it on the street, but on the football field, it's all good. So I'm just glad that he's not hurt. But that was extremely aggressive. Jalen Joyner, my God. What do they say? Location, location, location. location. <laughs> exactly. Sprague had his helmet come off, so he's got to come out for a play. So Simmons right back out there, swings it out to Terry Lindsay, who's upended in the backfield by Davion Ross. One in blue was the man who had the initial penetration on the prior play that forced Sprague to, fin uh, to uh, spin right into the waiting arms of Joyner. This time Ross gets his tackle. It's a football being played out there, man. It's good to see Sprague back in there. And may as well let him throw it, man. Third and 16 for Sprague. Play clock, I don't think, reset properly. It shouldn't already be at zero. This is going to be a delay of game against Bethune, it would appear, but there's no way 40 seconds had come off since that last play. All right. Back him up five. That kind of night for the Cats. Well, referees probably, you know, referees probably ready to go as well. You know, I mean, it's, time flies when you're having fun. But Bethune isn't having fun, but time is flying for the Tigers. So. Bethune will be uh, taking on Savannah State next Saturday. Back at home, 4 o'clock Eastern. 
Now third and 21 for Sprague. Goes out to Corey Turner. Make that uh, the formerly targeted on the deep ball. Jalen Terzato, but not a lot for him. And another Bethune punt coming inside 11 minutes to play in this one. Meanwhile, for Memphis, Doc, uh, an interesting game coming up in week two, going on the road to play Arkansas State. Sort of a regional rival, if you will, an Arkansas State team that just got hammered 73 to nothing in Norman, Oklahoma today. They're but feeling a little uh, desperate after just three wins. Uh, the, the heat's turning up on Butch Jones down there. Yeah, but, you know, normally when Memphis and Arkansas State play each other in football, it used to be a rivalry back when they, I was here in the early 90s. And, uh, Memphis used to dominate Arkansas State, but it is a regional rivalry like you talked about. And Memphis normally really never goes over to Jonesboro, but they're making a trip over there to ASU. And, of course, ASU, ASU not going to be happy with how they lost today. Yeah, so sort of a, an interesting entanglement. Then uh, back home against Navy the following week before uh, what could be a really intriguing game, especially if it features two 3-0 teams against Missouri at the uh, formerly Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis in week four. You know, I still call it the TWA. I forgot. Chris Smith came up foul for KCI. Good catch interference. The player was blocked into the return. First down. And they'll say that the Bethune coverage man was blocked into Drake. No flag against Bethune. Memphis takes over at its own 39 for this. A look at the preseason poll in a very interesting 14-team American Conference with the additions we showed you earlier from Conference USA. Memphis picked to finish to finish fourth just behind uh, that group of Tulane, UTSA, and SMU that picked up most of the first place votes. Based on what we've seen tonight to the extent it changes preseason expectations, which is probably not a whole lot, no reason to think that especially if the Tigers keep protecting this building the way they have and finish games a little bit better that they couldn't make a push for that top spot. No, they should make a push for that top spot. You see Tulane, the defending AAC champions, uh, University of Texas, San Antonio coming into the conference, two-time conference USA champions, and SMU is right there. But all those teams are right there. You don't see one team that's that much better than the next. So it should be a very competitive AAC this year. As we expected, time for Memphis to start going deeper down the depth chart. That means a chance to look at Tevin Carter, redshirt freshman from here in Memphis. Highest ranked quarterback recruit to ever commit to Memphis out of high school. He was an elite 11 finalist, had offers 24 of them, which included LSU, Michigan, Tennessee, a bunch of other big names. And a chance for him to get a little run under the lights in his hometown. Hargrove on the carry. Not a lot there on the right side, no gain. Third down and medium coming up, and a little more extracurricular was going on on the far side. And Nate, going back to Tevin, Tevin has a strong arm, man. He, he doesn't really like to scramble a lot. He's a nice little pocket pass, but he has a strong arm, and he has some accuracy, and he could have easily gone anywhere. So a lot of Memphis Tiger fans and Memphians have a lot of love for Tevin because he stayed home. And not only that, he knows he's playing behind Seth Hennigan, but he had jumped into the transfer court. He's staying here in Memphis and playing it out and being loyal, and a lot of Tiger fans like that. And look, you love to see him get an opportunity. To the outside, high for Carter and incomplete. Good work again by Joshua Thornhill. We've called his name a number of times on the back end of this Bethune defense in the second half to break that play up. He's fired up too. And he should. He should be. But you see Tevin Carter going back to Tevin, he throws a nice ball. You can see the velocity he had. Probably need to take a little bit off of it. It was a little high, but he throws a nice ball and he has a nice, great, fluid throwing motion. And that says a lot of how his high school coach and his coaches coached him. And and the coaches here at Memphis. He only threw that incomplete pass because he knew it would stop the clock right on 901. That was a shout out to the rest of the 901. One Memphis and all the rest in the house tonight. Seth Hedigan over 300 yards again tonight. His evening is finished. A very good second half. Sort of unlucky to have those two interceptions on his resume, but he showed some mental toughness, bounced back really nicely in the second half. He did. I'm glad to see him smiling because for a minute he wasn't smiling there. But when you put up these kind of numbers and you have this kind of offensive efficiency and dominance, put a smile on your face. Seth Hennigan, he gave Bethune Cookman a fifth to Hennigan. He's been playing well. He's got given him a fifth to Hennigan. He got a dub. Sprague has it knocked down by Hamilton. You know, Seth was used to a lot of winning when he got here to Memphis. You get a second look at 
Hamilton, who was all over this, hit him just about between the one and the two. In high school, he played for his dad, Dave, at Denton Ryan, 44 and two over three starting seasons, won the state title his senior year. And, and that's sort of the message that you've been getting if, around this Memphis program is Seth's done a lot of good things. Great to put up the numbers that he has. Spray goes to the outside for Stewart, who is leveled across the 30 by Williams. Flag comes down. Pickup of 20 as it stands. Looks like they're going to add 15 onto that for the hit by Joel Williams. But that's still, that's a beautiful ball. I mean, I, I love the way Sprague just placed that ball and put it right in that pocket, put it right in that hole, and you have 2-8. Omari Stewart caught it and got nailed, but he caught it and held on to it. But going back to Seth, well, he's just a winner. He's just a winner. He, he's won high school. You know, you're a coach's son. Your quarterback, you better be good fundamentally. He's that. You better be smart and know the playbook and know the plays. He's that, and that a lot of times that equals to success. Let's see what Nate Black has to say. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense, number 13. The previous play is under further review. So we'll get a look at this. Of course, since it's in the fourth quarter, Williams would be disqualified for the remainder of this game and then be suspended for the first half next week. Certainly the, the force of that is to Stewart's head. This is the kind of hit they're trying to take out of the game. Yeah, and, 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 and it's unfortunate because he is helpless right there. He is a defenseless receiver and the game is out of hand, but you still want your defenders to be aggressive. You still want them to make plays, but you still want them to make smart plays. So I understand that I'm just glad that the receiver isn't hurt, but now you, you're out of the game and you got a targeting penalty and you're going to affect yourself going forward, at least for the next one. And there are a couple indicators of targeting you're looking for usually, leading with the crown of the helmet and then contacting the head or neck area. And Williams does both here. That's the, the bottom or the top of his helmet, as it were, going straight into the side of Amari Stewart's helmet, who did really well to hang on there. Yeah, and you look at the definition of targeting. To me, that's that's definitely it because he led with his helmet. Then he put his arms out, but he wouldn't hit him with his helmet first. See the reactions over on that uh, Memphis sideline. That's an impressive hit to have happen right in front of you. Unfortunately for the Tigers, he's going to turn a 20-yard play. It would appear into a 35-yard play. Push the ball out to the Bethune Cookman 46. The Wildcats still have not yet been past midfield in this game. But I still give Amari Stewart all the credit in the world, man, for holding on to that ball because he took a hard hit. The bad news in this game for Bethune, obviously to be down 56 to 7, but you can't imagine Raymond Woody Jr. came into this game thinking deep down that the Wildcats were likely to win it. The really bad news, I think, is if I were a Bethune Cookman fan, I'm not sure I feel there's a much more definitive answer at quarterback going into next week against Savannah State than there was coming into this game. And that's a great point because who is the quarterback? I mean, Walter Simmons, they got 78 total yards, 39 passing yards. Now, Savannah State isn't going to have a defense like the Tigers, but you still want to know because if, if Walter Simmons came into our pregame meetings, right, as the third quarterback, what happens if when he's the starter and Luke Sprague doesn't come in now until the fourth quarter then you have Tyreek, who we haven't seen. So what happened that pro propelled him from being the third quarterback to the starter? So now going forward, if, if I'm a Thune Cookman fan, I'm wondering too, what are we looking like in the quarterback position? Because I don't know Memphis Tigers defense, outstanding game, but when you look at it on stats, uh, Walter Simmons, there's only so much he can do. Now, to that point, Sprague has already thrown for more yards than Simmons did. 21 for Sprague, 18 for Simmons on 18 attempts. Surprised this took After so long. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Wow. First, down First down with Hugh Cookman. Like I said, Nate, that, that's not targeting. No, exactly. <laughs> we had it all along. No, no, but the, We're going to get one more look at this. I don't know that it's going to help me a whole lot. Stewart's kind of bending his knees and going down a little bit. Maybe that's what they're calling that. 
that Williams otherwise would have been targeting the chest, and it was just unlucky that Stewart's helmet came down like that, but I think Joel Williams is fortunate to still be on the field here. No, extremely fortunate, and I'm, I'm glad for him because you don't want to get put out there for targeting right now in this kind of situation, especially with the game out here. Same spot, and Williams goes after Stewart again, and the flag comes right back out. Did you enjoy that lengthy review? The good news is here we go again. Bethune went right back to the well. The throw was in the same spot. And Williams went after Stewart. There are three flags. Could be two fouls. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number two. The previous play is under further review. The interesting thing here, Doc, is even if they don't call this targeting, that might have been pass interference as well. Looked like Williams might have beat the ball that time. Not only that, and unnecessary roughness, personal foul, a whole, a whole lot of things could have been called right there. But with this game being the way it is, I, well, I can't take any, I can't take anything away from these DBs, man. They're coached up and taught to be physical and play physical, and that's the kind of football I like. You know, not. Targeting. They didn't have targeting in my day. It just is what it is. But even right here, just taking a look at this and yeah, I don't. He said a targeting on number two. That can't be targeting on because that's football. That's the kind of play you want to make. It's just all arms and forearms and hands. So maybe he just called the wrong number when he said two because it was Joel Williams again. But that's definitely not targeting. No, it doesn't look like that's it. That's the that's the epitome of football. Probably still was interference. Even then, the ball was getting there about the same time. Definitely wouldn't think this is targeting. Watch us be wrong. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Okay. Second down. We're one for two. 500 average will get you in the Hall of Fame. We are. You know, I, the ref looks like he's been working out too, so he probably wants everybody yeah. to see. He wants screen time. Man. You know what I mean? He, yeah. it, it, it's been a great, greatly officiated game. You know, but he's been working out, man. So you know, maybe that's why. We, getting these back to back. Uh, you know what? I can appreciate it. There haven't been a lot of penalties. He hadn't gotten no. a lot of chances. Second and ten. Sprague against a four man rush. On the run. Floats it out of bounds. It'll be third and ten coming up for Bethune Cookman. <laughs> but already there seems to be a different dimension to this Wildcats offense with Sprague in there. Just that Memphis has to respect a little more of the route tree. Well, if you're a DB, you're like, okay, I know they're probably going to throw the ball, so I can get some opportunities to make some hits and make some plays. But you know, you got two different quarterbacks in with two totally different uh, personalities and abilities, and you know, Sprague is not going to run it. He's going to throw it, and he want to pick up some yards, and they want to try to pick up some points. So now you can just rush, and the back end can cover like the Tigers just did, and they get a sack on him because you know he can't move out of the way. Oh, he got he got it away. The ball came out of there. Bivens ended up with it. We'll have to get a second look at how that ball got from Sprague to Bivens. Maybe it was a little shovel pass at the last moment. Maybe it was a fumble. Yeah, it just came. It was knocked, just knocked out of his hands. Fox making another great play, just knocked it out of his hand, and you got Bivens. Not from Bell, Bivens and the, the vote. You got Bivens right there to pick it up and make something positive out of something negative. But yeah, the ball just, I mean, Sprague probably wanted to coach. Why you put me in the game? Because it's been rough since he got in there. Tulins puts it in the air. Fair catch call for immediately by Joseph Skates. That was six back there. Make that blank up seat number zero who's deep for Memphis. Tigers take over deep in their own territory. Next. A look at the remaining schedule for Memphis after a presumed victory tonight over Bethune Cookman. Let's put you on the spot, Doc Holliday. What's the Tigers record after 12 games? My unbiased opinion? Unbiased, right? I'm supposed to be, you know, just, just neutral. You certainly are. 12 and 0. 12 and 0. 12 win, <laughs> win, 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 win. <laughs> Tevin Carter back in at quarterback for Memphis. On the keeper, has a little seam across the 15. And he submarines down to the 16. 
what are the games you would be most concerned about? There's still going to be wins, of course, but maybe close wins. Uh, Tulane, of course. Tulane is tough. They've turned that program around the last couple of years, so you always have to be worried about them. Uh, uh, Memphis played them tough in New Orleans last year, uh, but Tulane able to get the W. Got to look at Tulane, uh, SMU. These are schools, you know, SMU leaving the conference, not heading to the ACC here soon. So those are two games you have to watch. Uh, but all those other games, all the games are winnable, but those are some games I'm definitely looking at. Hargrove gets the carry. He spun down for maybe a loss of a yard. Jefferson LaFontaine, the freshman from North Miami, Florida. 92 in gold. He was the one who ultimately spun him to the ground. Memphis has run the ball 38 times for 218 yards tonight. That's tough. Just under six yards of carry for the Tigers. Steve Carter gets a chance to complete a pass. 0 for 1 so far. Back to the air. And it's complete to Carter. Tevin Carter to Christian Carter. Out to the 25, a gain of nine. Sets up third down and manageable now for Memphis. And I tell you, Tevin Carter, I like he, has, he shows some things. He has great body control. Right there, you see him rolling out, throwing against his body, but he's still able to square his shoulders and throw a nice, accurate ball out to the second car. And this is what you want to see. You want to see Tevin Carter get some reps because uh, if he Ryan Silverfield, you never know if Seth Hennigan can stay healthy the entire season which he has been able to do a good job of that, but you want to have your back quarterback ready to have some experience. Hargrove hit immediately on the handoff in the backfield and driven backward. More penetration. This time it was led by 98 in gold, another anonymous player according to the roster we were given. Makes them tough to block. They're invisible out there. A lot of times when you make plays like that, and it's like that impressive. You just call him by the number anyway. It's better. You be like, yeah, that's good nine, word, nine eight. No, that's nine eight. That's Did you see eight. what? That's nine eight right there. You don't even give him. You don't even say the name. You said that's nine eight. Nine eight just made a heck of a play. Turned back on third and two. Memphis punt from Reed Bauer. And Bethune will start at its own 41 yard line. Get a look at some of the realignment going on around college football. There is a lot. BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF heading to the Big 12. They'll be joined by those four from the Pac-12, the Arizona schools, Colorado, and Utah next season. Of course, we have the six schools we talked about earlier joining the American, and then that uh, more movement, including Oklahoma and Texas, to the SEC. Four West Coast schools joining the Big 10. And just recently announced Cal, Stanford, and an American school, SMU, joining the ACC. That SMU one in particular going to stick in the craw of Memphis fans. Already no love lost for SMU. It just uh, turns up the heat a little bit on, on what the Tigers are going to do, what it's going to look like for them moving forward in uh, this brave new world of college athletics. Of course, you have SMU leaving, going to the ACC. Of course, the Memphis Tigers have been trying to join in these conversations. So SMU jumping out of the American Athletic Conference and SMU going to the ACC. So of course, when they face each other, it's already tough every time they play one another anyway. So it's some added fuel to the fire when these two teams face off and see one another. Timeout Memphis is trying to make sure they have the right 11 on the field with 437 to go in the game. Best starting field position for Bethune Cookman all night. Off the hands of Basel, he ultimately pulled it in. Would have been better off not doing so. Loss of a yard and the flag comes out. A couple of linemen got into it after the play. Nate Black has to sort this one out. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 66, 15 yard penalty, the down counts, second down. Jamari Sylvester, the senior right guard, picks up the personal foul. And it's back behind the play. 
defense. What you don't see there is it was a couple of linemen who were uh, who were into one another back around the original line of scrimmage. Basel on the delay, and he has dropped close to the 30. It's a good open field tap. That's, that's another thing I've liked about these Memphis Tigers DBs. They haven't missed a lot of tackles, these defenders at all, and they've, they've done a lot of great open field tackling. Cameron Miller, redshirt freshman out of Memphis Academy of Health Sciences. Transfer from Tennessee. His dad played here at, 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 at Memphis. He's a legacy. Third and long, Basel again. Not a whole lot there. Both coaches talked about tackling, not surprising at all. Everybody, first game wants to block and tackle. Inside three and a half minutes to go. All Memphis tonight. Might as well turn to next Saturday night's action in Jonesboro against Arkansas State. Seven Eastern, six Central to kick off. And we'll have it for you here, of course, on ESPN+. Plus. I would expect the, the Tigers to come out on this next offensive drive, hand it off a couple of times, possibly pick up the first down and milk this clock. Because I guarantee you, Matt Barnes and all, that defense, they want to end this game by keeping Bethune Cookman under 100 total yards. That just looks good. I mean, it just looks great. Not often you can hold the team to, uh, at the moment, 91 Bethune yards. Now it's time to get a look at our player of the game this evening. Brought to you by Geico, proud partner of the American. Haven't seen him for a while, so you might have forgotten, but Blake Watson torched the first half. Three touchdowns, the first Tiger to do that in a half in some six years. And it's great because Geico is one of those great insurance companies, and Blake Watson, Watson is great insurance for Seth Hennigan to have if the passing game isn't going that well. Blake Watson having an outstanding game. 10 carries, 75 yards, three touchdowns. His first game in a Memphis Tiger blue and gray uniform. So Blake Watson letting it be known he is here and he is the man seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Pretty solid debut for the transfer from Old Dominion. And Memphis will be back on the ball from its own 17 yard line with 2.55 to go. Ryan Silverfield's squad will go to 1 0 and turn their attention to Arkansas State next week. To your point about the total offense for Bethune, and we'll see if Memphis can pick up a couple of first downs here and potentially end the game without having to give the ball back to the Wildcats. Hand off to Hargrove, who stutter steps and gets across the 20 out to the 23 for six. The last time Memphis held an opponent under 100 total yards was 2015 when SMU was held to 97 yards against the Tigers. Wow, that long ago. Yeah, see, see how rare it is. So, of course, you know the way the defense struggled at times last season. Defense coordinator Matt Barnes would love to be able to have that stat happen here tonight so that his defenders can have that confidence going into next week's game at, at Arkansas State. Second and four. Up the middle this time, very little there. Hargrove is stacked up. Rayon Blake led the charge. It's still a lot of the starters out there for Bethune Cookman. 9 8 still out there, too. 9 8. Yeah, we love him. 9 8 still out. He's still out there, too. That's our, our second Geico player of the game. 9 8. 9 8, nine, eight man. 9 8. Like who made that play? 9-8. That's all you need. That's all you need is 9-8. Third down and four. Carter fumbled it, and Bethune-Cookman has a second defensive touchdown. Would you believe that? In G.K. Brown, a scoop and score. 91 total yards of offense for the Wildcats tonight. They have two defensive touchdowns. A big boy pick six and a big boy scoop and score. Well, their best offense has been their defense to me. I mean, you know, the game is over, but you don't tell GK that. You don't tell Bethune that. And you see the ball just comes out. And that's you see a quarterback and a running back, that's an option. 
Tevin, like, you're going to keep it, you gonna, I'm going to keep it, or I'm going to give it to you. And they got confused, ball hits the ground, you got to scoop and score, you got more points for Thune Cookman, and makes the score look a little better. High snap, good hold. That was well put down. And Hector puts it up and through. Excellent hold by Ethan Dentilio. For the backup quarterbacks, here's another look at that exchange you're talking about. And this looked like Tevin was trying to pull it. But when you're running back and you want to get the rock, he clamped down on it a little bit too early. And Tevin wanted to keep it, but by that time, he had already clamped out and the ball just comes out. So that's not, you know, that's a communication issue and really not working with each other too often to know the field because you got to have a field. When you know a quarterback and you all are running that option like that, a lot of times you know the field if the quarterback is actually going to keep it or he's going to pull it. And in that instance, they look like they just don't have that field together and turnover. No, he's shaking his head there. But I wonder if deep down Ryan Soberfield's actually a little bit happy about that because that gives him a chance to go in the locker room after the game and say, man, we got things to work on. We lost our focus. We got to finish. Oh, yeah, he was going to say that anyway. You know, he was, <laughs> right, now, now he's yeah, got some ammo. Trust me, he was going yeah, to say that anyway because you know he's going to say, hey, we, two picks, what's going on? We turned the ball over a couple of times and we had a couple of defensive breakdowns. We had a couple of offensive breakdowns. You know, coaches always, they always find a way to blame the players, even if it's the temperature of the water. Or the ice melted too fast. You like I, I didn't. I, I had nothing to do with that. But he's gonna have them. They gonna find a way to say something to you, and that's supposed to because they want to keep you motivated. That's three turnovers for Memphis tonight. That certainly you'd think would be Silverfield's biggest issue with the Tigers' performance. Maybe the only real issue. I'm sure he could find a couple others. Hector to put it in the air. No fair catch this time. That's been Memphis's move to this point. Look at that return. Bethune's had the big boy plays. Memphis wants to get in on the act. Looks like Jamari Chislam. Redshirt sophomore backup tight end out of Hutchinson Community College. He said, forget a fair catch. I don't want it at the 25. A good return, pulled his way out close to midfield. I don't blame him. How many opportunities is, is he going to get to return kicks or to get his hand on the ball? To touch it? So it comes to you. Go ahead and bring it back, man. Just don't fumble it. Don't fumble it. And he gets in, he ran over a couple of people, picking some great, great yards, and he get a couple of smiles. If there's a silver lining to that fumble for Memphis and the Bethune Cookman scoop and score from a Tigers standpoint, it's that now you'd expect. Memphis will be able to see out the remainder of this game, and it looks like, uh, assuming Bethune does not use any timeouts, Memphis is just going to kneel it out. So, in fact, for the first time since 2015, the Tigers will indeed finish a game having allowed fewer than 100 total yards to the opponent. SMU in 2015, now Bethune Cookman in 2023. Tigers go to 1 and 0, Bethune to 0 and 1. Memphis has Arkansas State next week. Nice smooth victory. Everybody healthy. That's what you're looking for from week one from a Memphis standpoint. And for Bethune, like we said, things to build off of. Certainly there was no quit. No, not at all. They played hard. They didn't give up. You know, you just outman. We outmatched. We talked about that, but they didn't give up. They continued to play hard. And that's what I was looking at. If the players are going to continue to play hard and play discipline and for the most part, not a lot of penalties, not a lot of turnovers for Bethune. So that's something Coach Woody can be, you know, happy about. But of course, he's not happy with the result. But that's a positive with Bethune. And if you're the Memphis Tigers, you expected to go one and zero. You went one and zero. So now you, you can finally look towards next week. We're going to be talking to Ryan Silverfield in just a few moments. Get his thoughts on this first game. Ten Buck says he mentions a turnover once or twice. But nonetheless, the fireworks go off at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Memphis cruises to a 56-14 season opening win in an important fourth season for Ryan Silverfield. An important season for Raymond Woody Jr. and Bethune as well. The 100th year since Bethune Cookman started football back in 1923. And uh, you would imagine he's going to do this program proud as time goes on. Just uh, going to be a process for the Wildcats. Meanwhile, for Memphis, Nothing that happened tonight would do anything to lower the expectations, to lower the optimism that Memphis can be a 9-10, even as you said, 12-win team once again. Yeah, man, I know, you know, it, 
people say, oh, he's been sending him 12 minutes to play the Memphis. No, when you look at their schedule, all of those games are winnable. But all of those games are also losable. But if they play together, play di discipline, take care of the football, finish games, this can be a real special season. And Ryan Silverfield wants this to be a special season going into his fourth year. And, and, and even going back to Raymond Woody Jr., he's going to do a great job. I mean, he's a coach, 12 years of college coaching experience. He's coached at Florida State, Oregon. So he has the pedigree. He has the experience for Bethune Cookman. So Bethune Cookman Wildcat fans should feel positive and optimistic about where that program is headed. But the Memphis Tigers as well, no one is surprised that Memphis came out here and dominated this game this way. But to see the defense play the way they played, we talked about it again, just holding Bethune to 91 total yards. And I wanted to see how the running backs were going to respond because I hadn't really gotten a chance to see Blake Washington. He comes out here and showed me exactly what Cramsey and Ryan Silverfield were talking about. A real good hard runner, great vision, tough guy, and that's exactly what he showed tonight. It's certainly a lot to like for this performance for Memphis this evening. A 56-14 victory for the Tigers over Bethune-Cookman. And hey we have Ryan Silverfield with us, fourth-year head coach of the Tigers. Coach, uh, one of the things that stood out to me when we had our conversation earlier this week is you said tonight you wanted to see the right mindset from your players. Do you think you saw the right mindset tonight? Yeah, they had the right mindset and the right approach. We just didn't play a very clean game of football. I thought the defense did a heck of a job all night playing top down and being clean with the most part with the tackles, but uh, really disappointing the offense not playing our brand of football smart and disciplined. Now, Coach, this is Doc Holliday. Just talking about that. If you could take the turnovers away, what is one point that you're looking at your squad and be like, I don't like how we did this. we got to do this better. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, our fundamentals weren't where they need to be. Now, we saw a defense that we really weren't expecting, and that told me to make sure I put our guys in the right situation. But, uh, you know, the reality of it is we just didn't play clean all around. Uh, we got to be able to get, I mean, make the blocks, all that stuff. Obviously, we ran pretty well, but not to the efficiency we need to. We certainly can't turn the ball over like that. You mentioned uh, the running game, Coach. That was really the storyline that caught our eye. Uh, Sutton Smith had the two touchdowns in the second. Blake Watson had the three in the first half. Seems like a deep running back room for you guys. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, we, you know, Blake Watson got the nod in the start. Obviously, Sutton Smith came in and did some good things. Uh, both, you know, were able to catch the ball in the backfield, which is important to us for them to be multifaceted. We're excited about those two. We need a couple other guys to get healthy and go. Obviously, uh, we got to continue to own the football. Congratulations, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks, Coach. Ryan Silverfield goes to 1-0 to start year four as a head coach of the Memphis Tigers. For my partner, Doc Holliday, and our entire crew here in Memphis, Nate Gatter saying so long from Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. The final score, Memphis 56 and Bethune-Cookman 14. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.